just love to show you. Well, right. let's go take a peek. Let's do it. You can use the death drop? Uh, I'm not doing the death okay. drop. No, I'm not doing the death drop. <laughs> back to making behind the scenes tours of what I want to call iconic haunted houses. And uh, this haunted house is definitely iconic. I saw a video on Amusement 360. If you've never heard it, look it up on YouTube. It's like, you know, I don't even know how they ended up because they mostly they do California um, and, and Disney type stuff. But somehow they did this haunt that I'm at right now. I don't want to show you what it is. There it is right there. I have driven, because I did drive. There's my car, okay? And I'm here at Field of Screams, which is, I don't know, an hour and a half outside of Philadelphia. And uh, look at that, you can get your head cut off. Kind of a, you know, a French thing. And uh, so anyway, I wanted to uh, film several haunted houses this year, because what we're trying to do on the Haunt World channel um, it's all this stuff really just happened. It's kind of weird. And I want to explain it, but like we were the original people, the haunt world making, uh, videos. There was no YouTube. We were making haunt world videos. And then I don't know. So like a couple years ago, uh, I'm like, we don't sell those. We, I mean, we don't do anything with them. So I just uploaded them to the haunt world YouTube channel and people liked it. And I really took it as like, Hey, this is kind of a vault like a history of the haunted house industry it shows you what haunted houses were like in 1995 and 1998 and 2001 and so i was like hey this is a different way to continue the same thing so we're we're, we're doing things a little different than most youtube channels we are not like going through with actors we are going to find the owners have them take us through we're going to ask them thousands of questions and so you get to learn everything and i'm asking questions i'm a little different than most youtubers because i own a haunt so i understand a lot of it and i'm going to ask questions that i think that you would want to know so we're going to go find the owner and uh and find out all about this haunt now one of the things i did happen to notice as i'm walking in everything here is themed and look at this they've got these like metal cutouts like everywhere i mean and they are everywhere see look at the ticket booth over there that's also cut out of metal i mean there's very little here that's not cut out of metal and uh everything is themed and check out this uh entrance sign over here they got a you know their own private hearse and then up there field of screams cut out of metal everything's cut out of metal this place is like so over themed i've never seen it's almost like a it's like the disneyland of screen parks it is pretty insane look at this one right here the chainsaw bar all cut out of metal like we got to find out who's doing this and look at that here we are field of screams and i've heard that they have the best midway in the entire haunted house industry and i heard that from a really big haunter and we're going to find out and you can see all the attractions they have and check this thing out right here this is a massive gift stop a gift shop and look at that right there it says apparel souvenirs and it's cut out of what again metal and they built this whole entire building it's totally insane and then look they even have directional arrows because this is a real screen park it says there's a trail this way the the darkness of den or something like that an asylum that way and the hayride there which is what they're mainly known for is the hayride and look they've got photo ops even their exit signs are made out of metal another metal sign and look at that they even have a hashtag so so survive the screams which is i guess what they want you to tag when you take pictures right there with that photo op and look at this look at this real support beams that are chainsaws like that's kind of insane so we're going to try to find the owner and he's around oh there he is hey, Larry. gene where's your brother jim <laughs> Uh, he, he's in the office. I'm on the build side. He's on the office side. But welcome to Field of Screams here in Lancaster, PA. Now, you know, I was telling you a funny story as I was driving up. Yeah. It was about 15 years ago. So I'm kind of embarrassed about this because he actually <laughs> forgot about it. And I said, yeah, I was going to come because, you know, he wanted to show us because, you know, for the Haunt World website, hauntworld.com. 
And uh, and then I ended up not making it. And he says, you know, we got actors here for you. And well, I was like, are you we serious? Out, Larry. Yeah, he went all out <laughs> in the in the off season, and I didn't show up. But I, brought, I, I have reindeer this time. But, <laughs> but 15 years later, here I'm go. here. But there's yeah. no actors, you said, this no, time. There's not, but I could probably make that happen pretty quick. Okay. <laughs> so, hey, I was wondering, uh, Gene, what the heck is this this is our our scream shop uh it also serves as my office as well so it's kind of where we sell all of our novelties uh we built this i guess it's probably four years ago now uh my office is on the second floor and um in the grain silo or just like up there where those windows are i'll show you but very few people have made it to that to that part of this building Um, now i noticed like can i just ask a question like this is insane here is a doormat (laughs) <laughs> made out of metal yeah gene but, why how is how in the world do you have time to make so many things out of metal here well the the quick story is my son when he was a senior in high school he designed a new conference room table for us it was it was four pe- three pieces that were four foot by four foot on a plasma cam program in, in high school and and he, it was back when the, the program needed to hand draw everything. He spent the entire semester designing and building this, this table. It came time to cut it out, and the teacher realized that, hey, our, our dust collection system is not going to allow for a 4x4 four four piece of metal on this table. So being uh, the, the great father that I am, I, I said, well, you know what, we'll, just, we'll buy the machine ourselves, and, and we'll cut it out ourselves. So since then... You just uh, never stopped. We never stopped. And oh we, my God! You we, you we haven't stopped. Tractor parts, all kinds of details. Does your son um, still work here? Yeah, my oldest son, twenty eight. He's he's pretty much uh, running the build crew now. My youngest son, who is twenty four, he's in charge of actor services. This is a fence. This was his project. I think when he was a senior in uh, high school, or he might have been in college at that point. He, it's insane to make this fence and cut out all the images, and you know, it's just. The, the, we just like the detail, and the plasma cutter is just a, a great tool. Like so, the, so, do you have a shop on property where you do all this, or is it off site? Shop is at my farm, which is about two and a half miles, you know, from here uh, to the north. And uh, it's, you build it's, there, and you bring it over we, here. We do. We build. We build a lot here, for sure. But how many people do you have year round that's on this build crew? Uh, uh, well, there's eight on the build crew year round. There's about sixteen full time year round from office staff. And, Holy cow! Yeah, so we, 16? We carry 16 year round full time employees. And do you do anything other than fill the screams? Well, we do a lot of little things. Probably shouldn't do anything anymore. No, I mean, like, are you, you're not doing escape rooms or no, any of that kind of no, stuff? I mean, no. We, we have five minute escape rooms here, but our bread and butter is uh, fill the screams. We certainly have, you know, our kids' event is Corn Cob Acres, which uh, one, of the, one of the staff members is pretty much full time Corn Cob Acres. We still do a little bit of farming uh, and we have the produce stand. So, but almost every, every one of those 16 people, their full time gig is working on Field of Screams. And then we, we steal them throughout the year for some little projects. But, you know, it, it started that we had no employees, it was Jimmy and I. And we had uh, our first employee came to us and didn't like their job, and we created the, this position. So then we started adding things like Easter flowers and Christmas tree sales and glow light vending just to just. Do you still do any of that stuff? We, <laughs> we, we still do, <laughs> only because we can't. We just can't stop. You know, um, <laughs> it's it's like we wouldn't need to. But we kind of like it. It's just it's it's kind of fun, you know. So. Does the town like uh, all the hoopla you bring every October? You know, because I, I I'm just like making notice, yeah, okay. Yep. And by the way, we talked about this on the phone. This is different YouTube video, right? Because I'm a haunt owner, so For I sure. know that some of the things you go through. Yeah. But if you look over there, right on the other side of their barn, you see people's houses. Yeah. Okay, and I yep. drove in a street across the railroad track, yep. and I yep. went past people's houses. Do you? So I you're mean, really close to a lot of people, we, and you we do are. really well. And, and I'm going to take you to a vantage point that only a few people have ever seen, and it's going to be up actually on top of that silo. Um, I have some really cool stairs inside that, that. Well, we go to my office, and then we can access some pretty cool plasma cut stairs, and then we can access the top of the silo, and you can see the proximity here. Of the neighbors, um, do they do they mind it? You know, most most of them enjoy it, but no matter where you are, you're always going to have those few that are going to complain, no matter what they're next to. But the the pig farm that we proposed, or the chicken farm, would probably be a worse idea for the neighbors. So. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, in, in the beginning, and, and I, you tell them that's your alternative. That's the alternative. You know, <laughs> we'll put the fans 
pointing towards your house. <laughs> See, there you go. It, it, the, the crazy thing is, and you only think about this in situations like when I'm talking to somebody like you that understands the work and, and what, it, what it takes. This, 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 this was a complete accident. You know, my brother and I were school teachers. We decided to have this dumb hayride in 93 and do this corny little, you know, ride through the trail. And, uh, you know, you, you took the bush hog and you lopped out a section of weeds and you put a pathetic prop in there. And that was it. And on this property, and I'll show you when we get out of the entertainment area, the parking lot was what's now the queue line for the asylum. Um, and there, there wasn't power here. There wasn't a pole here. There wasn't a stone here. There wasn't a tree. There wasn't a bush. There, there, there wasn't anything here. Not one building. The only thing that was here was the house and the two barns. And so does somebody live here on property? Yeah. So in... in you know, so there, he's talking about question, this house you know, right here. This house that, that's right here is part of the farm. So when I was a kid, my grandma lived there and we had a cow in the one barn, which is now the Den of Darkness. I raised chickens in the other barn, which is now the Frightmare Asylum. Um, so now the person that lives in there on this end is our one of our maintenance guys that does our table cleaning and bathroom cleaning. And he, he, he likes to stoke the fire when we have our fire pits. So he lives there. Um, the girl on the top floor is my uh, makeup manager, and there's three apartments in there. The other person on, on the front um, was the hayride manager. Now she just how many acres back. is the farm? We're about uh, 35. And how many of it's utilized for parking? About 15. 15. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, how many parking lot attendants does it take to to run this on thing? On a busy night, about 12. 12. We have uh, I forget what. What is, is the most people you've ever done in one night? 13,000. 13. It, it was complete insan insanity. We had we we were backed up everywhere. They were parked all over Mountville. We had the school parking lot rented out. We had the bank parking lot rented out. We had Flagger Forest. Do you still do that? Rent parking lots all over we, the place? We, we, yeah, we rent we rent all the parking lots. Um, and we still have Flagger Forest. But with our variable pricing now, we've really learned to control that. And I mean, you know, when you're over eight thousand, even seven thousand, the experience isn't great. I mean, you're you're a conga line. Um, you're, you're, you're as fast as you can get them through. You're getting them through. So a Parking busy down. night for you now is around six to eight thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Busy night be about eight thousand. Because you know I remember the old days from my haunts too, where we used to do, you know, a lot of like the most people the darkness ever did. You have to remember it's in the city. It's a, a yeah. but it might have been close to five thousand. But that was when the haunted house cost ten dollars. Yeah, right, you know what I mean. Right. <laughs> now it costs thirty seven dollars. You know, sure. and yep. so you know not not five thousand people don't come now. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's, that's for sure. What is and, the ticket price here? Uh, well, uh, the cheapest night's forty dollars. Most expensive, fifty-five. Okay. And we have we we do. And does that do they get everything for that? So the way it works with variable pricing for us is on on certain nights of the year, the slowest nights. You take the, so we're open about twenty-eight days. You take the the slowest, you know, fifteen maybe or or ten, and you can buy out the cart. You can buy. The, the Den of Darkness, the Asylum, you can buy the Hayride, you can buy um, Nocturnal Wasteland, you can buy them separately, or combos. But when, but when they come, they can't, like, there's no ticket where you can buy it and stay all night and go through it as many times as you want. There's not. We, we, uh, that would kill your parking, right? Yeah, we, we just couldn't do it. We need, a, we need to have the parking turnover, and the queue lines would be too long. Um, but on the busiest nights of the year, you can only buy the Screen Pass, which is all, all four attractions. So on a busy night, we don't have, you know, somebody taking up a parking space that's doing a twenty a twenty dollar haunt. Do you yeah. charge for parking? We don't. No, it's free. You know, I I probably would if I had five lanes of road coming in, and we could have, you know, you're just trying to park them as fast as you yeah, can. As fast as we can. So for those who don't understand what what he's saying, he's saying that if he tried to charge for parking, it would cause more problems than it was worth. It, it, it would be. We, I'd rather raise my price five dollars than charge for parking. Um, because of the the it would make more of a bottleneck yep. problem yep. trying to stop the cars get the money you're just bringing them in as fast as you can and parking mm -hmm. them we have uh, on those busy nights we have multiple crews so and i'm watching the cameras up in my office so when the cars get backed up going into lots into lot three and it's backed up around that s turn then we'll get on the radio and we'll start parking lot four so while it's backed up going into, into one two and three we're, we're at that point we're refilling lot one Lot two is full and we're finishing lot three. We'll start dumping into lot four. If that's not fast enough, then I'm calling to the on the radio to Flagger Force or our parking company and I'm saying dump them down Hemplin, which is into one of our residual parking lots. On a lots. busy night, how many people are working here? 
Oh boy. Um, if you're guessing, two hundred and two hundred and something. Two, wow. Two thirty maybe. That's insane. Yeah. Well, you need you have twelve tractor drivers on a busy night. You have twelve ticket twelve ticket booth people. Um, you know, twelve security. Um, twelve twelve parkers. Um, and then and then you have as many actors you can possibly get. Which <laughs> is any, you know you know how that is. Yeah, it's I know how that from is. From fifteen to fifty per attraction. Um, so you, you had all that. You have, you have four EMTs. Um, you have you have eight people, you know, directing traffic off of Route 30. You know, so just even just the residual staff, you know, you, you get to 60 pretty quickly before you even get to actors and managers and and so forth. But but the one one area that we're saving on, you know, number of people needed is the ticket booth. Once we went to, you know, online ticketing um, and a QR code. You know, we we really straight. Yeah, we're down to ticket. one. Yeah, we're down to one. Yeah. Well, you can you might have noticed that what used to be a queue line for the ticket booth is now a uh, a bar area. <laughs> so it's our. It's the do area you have a liquor bar. license here? We do. Yeah. Does that do well? It, it does. It's it, like what something like a lot of haunts are trying to do is yeah. have liquor sales. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a different... But let me ask you this question, not to interrupt you. Because, yeah. you know, I've, oh, I did one video and I got criticized heavily for interrupting the person I was talking to. <laughs> but we're having a conversation, sure. you know. And so, uh, but you know, the old thinking with alcohol and haunts was, hey, your actors get beat up by drunk people, right? Yeah. And then now all haunts are trying to have alcohol. Yeah. So, I mean, how's that? Has it made it worse, better? Well, here's the this, difference. Um, you know, so... If, if with, with the bar, I look at it, it's almost like we're casting a net and we're capturing that person that you want to get that normally would have made it to your front door. You know, you, you wouldn't have found the stumbling drunk person until they got to your door. At your, and now you have this scene where your line attendant is trying to reprimand or call security to get a drunk person that's just about ready to go into your building compared to they're going to end up at the bar and we're probably going to find them there. And, and if you're if you're uh, if you're drunk, you're intoxicated, you can't stand up. You're escorted off the property. You have a you know hopefully someone's with you can drive you home. Come back a different day. Um, the other thing that it helps with is you, you know if you're gonna drink, if you're gonna have a drink, you're gonna have a drink. So now you know, hey, Field of Screams has a chainsaw bar, so we'll go there and have have a drink at the bar. We don't have to or we don't choose to sit in our car in the parking lot and pound a beer or two or three before we come in or keep going back to our car because you know what happens then they have three beers in their in their car or two before they came and three more and then they're fine when they walk in they're all having a good time next thing you know you know they, they want to go fisticuffs so i want to see this uh this gift store yeah. now you built this from scratch we did um what we had was a we're really good at repurposing so I see. I have a lot of repurposed lumber there. Yep, that's that's mushroom board that uh, mushrooms get grown on. The uh, the chainsaw brackets are actually functional half inch steel brackets are actually supporting that. Uh, that's deck. crazy. The all the tin came off another barn that I have on another property, and and I've been I've been waiting to take the roof off. And, that, and you designed it to fit onto an existing silo. Yep, yep. That silo was originally a oil drum, so that's. That's not a typical silo that's this thin gauge. That's three eighth inch plate steel. Um, it was an oil drum in its, in its past life. And then it, and then it moved to Ephrata, which is uh, about 30 minutes from here. And it became a grain bin. Um, so it had a big funnel inside and the grain was dropped up top and it had a big chute and, and you'd get the grain out that way. We had it craned into position here. And then, I mean, there's pictures of me like taking a you know metal saw and cutting the doors out and, you know, and, and making it part of our you know, part of the, the so can we see your gift store? Yeah, let's do but it. I have to ask you one question before we go in because I just I don't want to forget. You got this truck right here, and it's nice and wrapped, <laughs> so everybody knows you're coming. It's right. the hey, it's the guys from Phil of Screams. Right. <clears throat> you got another truck up there wrapped, and I know you happen to have another thing that's wrapped. It's like an RV, right? <laughs> you have an RV, we do, yeah. and it's wrapped. Well, the RV <clears throat> is identifiable. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you drive that thing from here. To Transworld. Is yeah. this not correct? Yeah, we do. Now, I just have to ask this because I think a lot of people would want to know this. It's uh, I go to Transworld. You know, I happen to live in St. Louis, for those people who don't know. And I walk out of Transworld and I see your big, loud RV because right. you can't miss it. It's <laughs> loud like this. It says, we are filled with screams. We're America's number one haunted attraction. You can't miss it. 
and it's parked illegally oh. every <laughs> year in the same spot, and it has about 30 <laughs> tickets on it. Uh, Is this done on purpose? <laughs> uh, well, defiance, uh, and, and do you pay the tickets? Well, I, I, I've, we've never paid a ticket. Okay. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> Is there? Have you ever counted how many tickets you've got? Well, it's, it's, usually, it's usually two per day. Two per um, day. How do you get one or two? I mean, they're not going to tow the thing, right? <laughs> so we're kind of like tempting them to tow it. Yeah, um, but uh, and yeah, I notice like it piles up over the days. It does, yeah. yeah, and and they don't. They just keep giving them to you. I think what we should do in the future is if if you're at Transworld and you get a ticket on your vehicle, please bring it and put it on the RV. <laughs> and the RV is always parked behind the dome. Yeah, in that nice one spot room. where all, yeah, it's like behind the yeah. dome, and it's always sitting right there on the corner. We had permission. We had permission the one year. So we just figured that that was good enough. <laughs> and so now every year it's like a tradition. It's a tradition. What's before, the man. most tickets you think you've gotten? Oh, like, man. How, I mean, there was a lot of I tickets on it last year. How many do you think were on there? Uh, I thought it was like forty. I, I was gonna say fourteen, but I mean, it 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 could have it could have been more. the whole thing was stapled yeah, with it tickets. Is, it, it's embarrassing. <laughs> I, and I can't believe they just keep giving them to you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's. But you don't pay them. No, we, I wouldn't pay them either. We, I don't live there. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, it's absolutely funny. But do you do it on purpose? Like, not really. I mean, honestly, we had we had permission. We had permission the one year, <clears> we, and we had a letter on the dash, and they still gave us the tickets anyway. So you said, so, "Hell with it. We're going to keep doing hey, it." You know what? That's how Field of Scream started because we we went. Not to many people know this. We I went to well, where this tin came from. My other farm in, in uh, Silver Springs, up over the hill. We went to the township there, and, and I had this great plan. You know, I'm a 20 some year old kid, and I said, hey, I want to do this thing, Field of Screens, I want to do this haunted, I probably didn't have a name at that point. I want to do this haunted attraction, and they said, absolutely not. I went to the, the township board. So that didn't work, so we just came over here to Mountville. This was my dad's property, and just did it without asking. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how all haunts uh, that are over. How many years has Field of Screams been here now? This is uh, this we've been we we've been operating 31 years. We're going into our 32nd season. And l let me ask you this, like, in context with Philadelphia, mm -hmm. okay? Because people know where Philadelphia yep. is. They don't know where. You know, you say Lancaster, but it's yeah. not technically yeah. the, Lancaster. The town is right? Mountville, Mountville, Pennsylvania. So, how far are you from uh, Philadelphia to, for so yeah. people understand how far yeah. away you are? So, so, to the King of Prussia exit, we're about an hour and ten minutes. To, to get to anywhere in Center City, Philly, we're under an hour and a half. Um, so, we're, we're kind of we're, we're in the middle. We're in the hub of a, of a spoke. You know, a wheel of towns. You know, we have Harrisburg and Reading and Allentown and Philly. And, when and, you do marketing, do you market into Philly? Well, that's the problem. Since since Mountville and Lancaster are so small, we need we need to market into all these towns. You know, Baltimore and Harrisburg. Where do you and where where do your most of your customers come from? Baltimore, <laughs> Philadelphia, we have where? A, a, a very strong three hour draw. So wow. all all those areas we need to hit all those areas. The great thing is, you know, we we completely cut out radio from our budget budget probably four years ago. And with social media, we, we can we can target where we where we want to target. Um, super strong two hours, three hours is very strong. Um, so we're you know Baltimore, Reading, Allentown. You're hitting Philly, everything. Yeah, we hit it. All right, right, let's see yeah. this gift store. Yeah. Um, and right away, I notice more metal with like little flickering lights. That's the that's the stairs. Oh there. my goodness! What the hell? Why would you do something like that that nobody would even see? You just humor yourself. We 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 did that because we could. We you know? did it because you could. And it's like Elon Musk. They they said, why did you make the uh, you know the. <laughs> yeah, why no? Why did you make the uh, what's the uh, the new uh, truck he's got? Right. The, yeah, the why did you make it bulletproof? And he goes eh. because, because I can. Yeah. Because yeah. we we I wanted to. Shoot an arrow in the side yeah, to yeah. <laughs> we we did that. You know, it was partly it was it was mainly because cyber I, truck. I've cyber been truck. Building things for we've been building things for thirty one years for everyone else, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to build one thing for myself, and not a whole lot. And of it was this. It, but, but, uh, yeah, Holy cow! Like that's insane. It reminds me of like uh, American Chopper right. when they did the Black Widow yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, and how long would it take to cut like these panels? Uh, we probably spent we probably spent a week on this on this project. Oh my god! Yeah. And the crazy thing is when we we didn't really 
wasn't engineered. We just built it and we brought a scissors lift in here and that wasn't tall enough. So we had scaffolding set up on top of that. So we're standing on the scaffolding and then we started welding, you know, welding the stairs, but welding, welding one and you're, and you're standing on that one while you're, while you're welding the next one and work, working your way down. And you just did it because you could. You know, we could. And that wasn't sure how many brackets we needed. So we, we put, put a couple chainsaw brackets in and, and I, I thought originally I was going to put a lot more and I put one or two and I'm like, this is all neat. So you can decide if you want to trust going on or not. So th this is your gift store. This is the back end of it. I mean, obviously, you know, for, for your viewers, we, we are off season. I mean, so obviously this, this is, uh, so these roll up and yeah, I see you have now, do you just like showcase stuff? And then behind here, you have it on, yeah, on shelves. There's all kinds of storage here. So you um, say, I want this purse and they yeah, go back and, and get we, it. And we get it. And how many people work in your gift store? Eh, five. Five, okay. Yeah. We have four registers, so there's four register stations. And I see you have like a bunch of, of the items down here as well. Yeah, so there, there, there's, it, it, from a customer viewing, you know, they can they can see anything they want. There's prices there. It's it's, it's shot glasses, it's keychains. What is your number one seller? Obviously, t-shirts and yeah. hoodies, but hoodies. besides that, yep. besides that. Um, boy, besides that. I see I mean, you sell uh, pants. Yeah, we have everything. We have we have underwear. Um, our our our, t our field screams teddy bears are are very popular. All of our all of our branded branded items. You know the you know you know keychains. Um, shot glasses are very popular. Mugs, beer mugs, travel mugs, coffee mugs. And and one of the things I noticed about your gift store, it's like open on three sides. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can service a lot more people at the same time. Yeah, we, we had a big a big discussion about if we were going to make a walkthrough gift shop. Um, my gift shop, you know, my, my main employee that runs the gift shop originally really wanted to have it that customers could come in and shop. And I was really concerned about theft. This is probably better. I, from, I, think, it, I think it's better for us. You know, it's, it, it, it and works. I really like these things you made up here to showcase like bandanas, mm -hmm. hats. Yeah, it's uh, and then, you know, the one thing and by the way, because like, you know, I'm attention to detail person. Mm -hmm. I typically notice like things, but you have a heater up here. Right. <clears throat> and I guess that keeps those people pretty warm, yeah, right? It's, it's 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 pretty good. How much would something like this cost? Well, the, this whole build, this this whole uh, building was about three hundred, maybe three hundred fifty thousand. And you were saying you do like that much every season, so it paid it's for what itself. It, it's about what it grosses a year. Wow, yep. that's insane. So everything's organized, small to to four X, and, and all these are functional functional. Oh, okay, and cool. We can, we can change out the prices and. and, and yeah, that is and, so freaking cool. Yep, and, and then we of course we you know, built the shelves and. Um, you know, did all that work on, on site here. So you made all of this yourself? Yeah, we, we actually brought this, we almost built everything on site ourselves. We did bring a contractor in uh, for the concrete. Uh, I brought a, a plumbing uh, heat, heat guy in for the heater. Um, and we had a general contractor help us help us with the build. So. And then you say you have an office in here? Yeah, and... so, the, so the office, this is, this is going on. Uh, this is going like behind the scenes ish. Uh oh. But you can even see like on the handrails, plasma cut. And plasma <laughs> cut. Oh yeah, look right here. Plas. I mean, like you do it just because you can. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna make a bracket, it might as well be plasma cut. And you got your stairs stained, and it, oh, it's really warm up here. Yeah, I turn the fire on for you so you can get cozy. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> and then here you have like a security system. This is like monitoring everything on the property. Yeah, so this, on a busy night, on a busy night, this this is where this is where I am. I, I'd rather be out there being Jack the Clown. What's in um, the uh, a tarantula? That, that's a ball python. That's oh, okay. A shot mascot. He's hiding. He's hiding down underneath there. This is this is uh, this is Trip, the screenshot mascot. There he is. There we go. <laughs> he'll get he'll get nice and big. And you got a workout gym, and you got a a real functioning fire, and of course, <laughs> what it wouldn't be complete if everything on here. <laughs> look at that! It says Scream Shop. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's the drawing of the building, and yep. What that's, isn't that's done it. in metal here? Uh, well, you know, once you get. Good at a certain thing. It, I love these uh, beams and this mm -hmm. old, yeah. Yeah, we actually tore a barn down in Washington Borough and got all you know all this old lumber. 
So let's walk on these stairs. Yeah. And get the bird's eye view and then let's go see the haunt. Wow, this is something else. So we, we, we brought this in. This, this, this is also a safe room, so uh, you know, if we have a disaster, we can... This, this is the one that spots it, part of our disaster plan. Is Look at that. Here. Look at that. You got chainsaws on the steps, spiders. Um, just, and hands. And, yeah, and you have like skeleton hands. And it leads up to this door that I'm sure. Oh, and here you got some femur bones. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's pretty insane. And then you have yourself a little deck out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the best vantage point, though, Larry, is if you if we go up one more level. Oh yeah, let's, oh you climb up the thing. I don't know if I can do that with the yeah, camera. I'll hold it for you. But uh, let's see if we can look around here. Yep, it's way better up top. No, we will. Yeah. Because I'll I'll turn. Turn it off. So uh, so let's just like get an idea here. This is parking, I'm guessing. Yeah. So you can. And this is your midway. Yeah. And then this, what this what is, is this, this over is here? One. This this is parking lot one, and then two is around the corner, three is up there. Four is over by the houses you can see way in the distance. Five's down here. This is the lot we rent across the street. Um, so is this a haunt, I guess? So that's Nocturnal Wasteland. That's the entrance that goes down to the walking trail in the woods. Yep. It's a real, it's real interesting this time of the year from a standpoint of there's no corn, you know, the, 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 there's no food trucks, you know, all, all that stuff is, is not here. What is uh, experience the chill? That's that's the beginning of the hayride. So, okay, where do they line up to get they, on the hayride? They go in. They go in the hayride right straight ahead here, um, and then they go in this this little, not the exit ramp there you see, but the other other end of that building, and then the queue line for it is is back on a, in the distance there, um, right before the experience the chill sign. Okay. Every attraction has about fifteen hundred linear feet of of waiting line queue. And then this is a, 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 a haunted house, Frank Asylum. which looks really cool. And then there's another haunted house. Now, let me ask you, what are your haunted houses made out of? I mean, these pole barns, what are they? Well, they're, it, it's essentially a pole barn. I mean, that, that's, uh, that's an, old, an old existing barn that was retro. And then, of course, when you're standing in front of it, you know, you're pretty much viewing the facade, not, not, the, not the red roof. And then I see a stage over there. What what happens on the stage? Oh man, uh, bands, uh, rap battle, dance. <laughs> really? Cops. You know, we have we have all kinds of stuff, and we used to do a lot more in the entertainment area. Um, you know, and there's the chainsaw bar. Chainsaw bar, and and all and over there to the right of the chainsaw bar, where all those queue lines are, that's all covered with food vendors, and then behind that is the bone yard for the food vendors. Now I noticed, because I said I noticed like little details, I just so happened to notice that in these pots you have flame, mm -hmm. obviously there's flames coming out of them bowls, right? Yep, there's, there's... How high do those flames go? They can go about six feet. We usually keep them at about 14 inches, you know, constant burn. Huh. Dare to return. Yep. I see. I noticed another little tidbit. Yep. <laughs> As you're leaving, they dare you to return. Yep. That's pretty clever. Yeah. And then what is that? Is that like a the bar area? That's the bar, uh, the chainsaw bar, and then that shed is this. That's a complete temporary setup. That the chainsaw bar, because we wanted to see how it went. And then that whole area, from the ticket booth up, we have a really elaborate plan for with the whole new entrance way at the top, a, a, a stamped concrete entrance way with a with a fountain a new ticket booth a new a new bar a new uh bar seating area um so that that'll happen that, that bill will happen this year or next depending on you know, now you guys don't own that house right so back to other question you know do, do they get um, free tickets in in, in the back <laughs> in, no we make them we make them work here in, in, in the past you know mm -hmm. we didn't we did nothing was here and and all we owned was that house since then we, we've purchased almost every property that borders. So the house across the street, the white one, that's, uh, that guy comes out, he, he likes to play Michael Myers and make cotton candy. Uh, so we bought that house. The house right here that's yellow and brick, um, we, we purchased that house and then we expanded our, our food area back and I planted those green giant trees. So you own the White place. House, you own this house, do you own yeah. that house over there too? The one right next to it we don't have yet, we'll have that soon. 
Um, so you're just buying them to, you know, yeah, the, keep the peace. The truck up there, we own that one. We own the next one, and we own every everyone else around the perimeter there. So there's oh about, my goodness, how many years did it take for you to acquire all these? Well, the, and what is the main reason for acquiring them? Just protecting your 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 investment. You know, it uh, if 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 the tenant lives there, they're way less likely to complain. You know, <laughs> and expansion. I mean, that gives us. You know, we're landlocked. So that gives us the ability to push back. It, it get, gives us about, uh, we, we probably have additional eight acres in, in, in perimeter there. So I'm not sure what we'd ever do in that area. Um, but, you know, a lot of these places like that one there houses my asylum manager, my costume manager, and my... Um, so how many houses do you own then? Um, if you're I, guessing. I guess on the property it's one, two... <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, I guess ten. I guess ten, ten houses. Ten oh my goodness. Yeah. And how many more do you hope to acquire? There's really only there's only three more than I need. Um, and then that there's three more that'll complete the entire perimeter. There you go. So, yeah. I, I tried to buy that um, across the street. It's it it used to be part of this farm in the nineties. There's another the plant? Third, yeah, well, it wasn't a plant. It was just a field. And there was 30 acres up there. And I reached out and reached out and reached out and said, hey, we'd love to buy this property. It's sitting dormant. And it was just, it was just weeds. And, and, and actually, you know, no one knows this except for you guys in this video right now. But I would mow, I would mow it on busy Saturdays and park cars up there. We just tr like truck, pick up truck. <laughs> They're coming down Spring Street. And anybody in a pickup truck, we just weave them up there because... It was, we just had to get rid of it. What is it now? It's a uh, freezer. It's a it's an automated an automated freezer plant or warehouse. So, like for Giant Foods, for example, it'll it, the, the the robot will go up and pick a partial skid off of any area. So instead of getting to buy it, they built that. So uh, you win some and you lose some. But. Yeah, I think you're winning more than losing. <laughs> so Gene, it even says <laughs> Gene's Fortress. Right. And it says a bunch of other little things that no one would be able to see down there, I don't right. think. And what does it say? The little, little cup holders here with our chainsaws. Oh, my God, I didn't notice that. Yeah, th that's, our, that's the Phyllis Cream Circle skull um, on, that, on that image. And then over here is the death drop if you want to just uh, <laughs> end it all. You just want to end it all? <laughs> you just dive down and then it's over. That's it. The, but the cool thing here, I mean, I, I can almost see everything from here um that i can see on my cameras you know you can you can see you know most of the parking lots on a busy night you can you can see if the cars are flowing in lot four which you, you don't really know where it is from here but but i do because i build it but um that's the nocturnal wasteland queue line and and you can see that the entrance to it is down there the whole way down where it says uh, nocturnal wasteland and you can see parts of the hayride and it's really neat on a on a on a busy night the tractors are going, customers are flowing in. You can see the traffic on Route 30. <clears throat> you can see the fire out in the hayride, like the explosions. And, and you own this with your brother, right? My brother and I are, are partners, yeah. Yeah, and so, like, w I obviously get what you do. You do a lot of the construction stuff. Yeah. What is your brother? What role does he play? He's on the office side. You know, we you know we started in, in 93. You know, we did it as a hobby, and we both did everything together. We, we advertised, we dressed up, we acted, we made hot dogs, we ran the scenes. Um, and then as we got busier, we had to, you know, separate duties. And I became more and more on the, on the build side. He became more and more on the office side, which is natural because he was a math teacher. I was a shop teacher. So that worked out pretty well. So now he's pretty much, you know, the CFO. He, he's in there, um, you know, entering all the numbers and, and uh, doing press kit delivery and advertising and, and controlling office staff. And, um, and he also obviously doing operations here. He runs the, the upfront, the hayride, the tractor drivers. He kind of manages that zone, um, you know. And, and I'm more on the on the build side, deciding what, what's getting done, what's getting torn out. Do, do you change. enjoy that? Do I enjoy? What's it? your most favorite thing? I mean, is it uh, running the haunt, and or is it uh, when the haunt's over and getting to do something new? You know what, what's great about this job, you know, owning a haunt is it. it the, the season is amazing, you know, it, it, it's fun. You know, this, right now is a great time of the year. Um, we're here in the off season, it's, it's middle of December. And right now we are, we are under full construction for 2024. 
But what I what I love is during the season planning what I'm going to do next year and the year after. We're, we work on about a three a three year build schedule, so we're always gathering things for the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's fun to be able to build anything you want. Not have to answer to anybody for what you want to do. You come up with an idea, and you figure out a safe way to do it, and you and you get to build that. Unlike some you know corporate place you're working, we have to run things through all these different levels. You know, you just get to build anything crazy that you decide you want to do. So I love that. But then I also love once it's built, and all these people get to come here and experience it, and just see the. When joy. do you start building it? Well, we never stop. We, so I mean, like, but it's like let's say it's freezing cold out here. Yep. Uh, do you actually get out here in the freezing cold? Yeah, and- we do. We work year round. You see two cars down there now. They're currently working in the doll room in the den of darkness. Um, so we usually have three major projects going on at once. So if it's freezing cold. We are over in the shop on the plasma cutter, um, or, cutting more chainsaws. Yeah, making more chainsaws. <laughs> or, or we're in the build in the building with the or, heater or on. Or chainsaw cup holders. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 you know, participating in drinking the drink that belongs in the cup holder. There you go. But uh, if the last couple of years, we, we were able to work outside year round. So we had to force ourselves, you know, to go in. I mean, but as far as that season goes, the funny thing is, Nocturnal Wasteland gets loaded with mosquitoes in like June, July. So we try to plan that we're not in Nocturnal Wasteland. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Season. Have you had any, uh, like, uh, famous uh people come or people yeah. travel from like another country to come see it yeah they they, they they come all the time from other places a lot of times we don't know i mean carpet bagger was here richard christie loves to come you know attraction 360 you know travel channel um a cha- attraction 360 uh that is one of their highest viewed videos and for anybody who hasn't ever been on attraction 360's website it's an incredible website that features mostly you know, amusement, high-end amusement attractions. Yeah. How in the heck did you end up on there? You know, it's one of their highest viewed videos. Yeah, the, the, the crazy thing is, you know, they reached out to us um, and we encourage, you know, anyone to reach out, you know, vloggers, YouTubers, um, you know, they, they, they need content as well and we need exposure. So it, it's a great marriage. You know, we, you know, we're, we're willing to, you know, we love this industry. We're passionate about it. We, we love to share. We love to, you know, um, show people around. But and you know, the thing for me is like, they're mostly a Southern Cal, yeah. like YouTube channel. How do they end up on the East coast to yeah. see your haunt? Honestly, they just, they reached out like, like many do. And, and, and we, we, we put our feelers out there too. Um, but they, they wanted to come out and, and, and film and we were all about it. And if you haven't seen that video, go to the internet and type in Field of Screams Amusement 360. It's an amazing video. Yeah, thank you. And it's got like almost 6 million views. It's yeah, insane. Yeah, it, it's it's up there. Well, are you ready to go see uh, some we'll, of your haunts? Yeah, we'll, we'll walk through the hayride. It's, it's going to get dark. Um, you know, keep in mind, corn's down. We, we won't have any uh, show lights on. We'll just walk through and talk about it. Then we'll do uh, Nocturnal Wasteland and then we can go in the buildings because at that point it'll be dark and uh, yeah, just love to show you. Well, right. let's go take a peek. Let's do it. You're using the death drop? Uh, I'm not doing the death okay. drop. No, I'm not doing the death <laughs> drop. <laughs> All right. I did manage to get out of the silo alive. Yep. And uh, and you were saying something that was very interesting. You know how many people, hmm. like, who went as a successful haunted house, and I've never heard anyone say this in my entire life. <laughs> You know if they're successful based on what? Well, uh, people like to say what their attendance is, but if you really want to know how busy they are, count their porta potties. <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you, you look at their porta potties and the length of their queue line. You know, no one, no one's buying porta potties just to impress people, right? Right. And you have how many? We have between sixty and seventy-five if you count the ones that are for the actors. Oh my and gosh! For the, and for the customers, so that is crazy. So as we look around here at your midway, I happen to notice every single one of these uh, tables has something metal on it. Right. This is getting out of hand, Gene. <laughs> I know it's it's a problem. And then I notice up there you have like some show lights. Yeah, we we, we added a uh, oh we, we added a really cool thing two years ago. We have uh, video mapping on the buildings, and the the company we use actually does um, most of the NFL football teams. So it's a really cool show. So and you video the, map what? The the buildings. I'll show you when we get down there. 
Um, and so what you have here in your midway, you have axe throwing. Axe throwing, and, and all the food trucks are missing. So this this is all blocked. You don't see these houses. You don't see anything. That's all blocked with, with food trucks. Food trucks, okay. And that lights up the And area. you get like a piece of that or something? Yeah, we, t we charge a percentage. We okay. Percentage. So these are escape rooms, I'm assuming. Yeah, Captured, do, lockdown, uh, heist. Minute or a two-minute axe throwing experience. And how much does it cost to play five, the escape? Five dollars for two minutes. Uh, escape rooms are... $5 for pers per person. They're five minute escape rooms. Um, they can handle six people, maybe eight. Uh, and then you have your stage here, we which we saw. And, uh, you know, all kinds of competitions on the stage. We used to get crazy. We used to have, we used to bring snow in and. Okay, hold on a second, real quick. <laughs> I hate to cut you off and I'm gonna get criticized for this. But is that an anti and wait a minute. Ends, yeah. Is that the like the one you see in the mall? It is, yeah. yeah. And how in the world did you get them to put a pretzel stand here? Well, we actually, we, we anti ants are so busy that sometimes we have three anti ants on site at on the same night. But how did you get them to put one here? Well, I was actually approached by anti ants, and they they came to us and wanted you know they were here on a busy night and said we need to have an anti ant stand here. Are you freaking <laughs> kidding me? I have never seen any yeah. such thing. Yeah. And you have games over there, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but like when I saw that, I was like, wait a minute, is that like a play or yeah. is that the real thing? Yeah, that's that's a real thing, and then and then he'll bring a trailer in as well and park a big trailer down there or up up in here and. It's crazy. But the video mapping, it you know, takes place on both buildings. Um, we is that every night? There. It's every night. And what will happen is our the show controller will take over the, it on on the 30 minutes on the hour. So at 6.30, 7, 7.30, 8.30, automatically the show will start. We built these custom gargoyles here that have you know gas lines through them and fire. So, so the, that, that lantern will be always lit. And then during the show, it's like, bam, bam. Yeah, and the fire's going, the show's going, and stuff's happening on the buildings. And it's, you know, the, the problem is at, at any haunt, it's boring waiting in line. Yes. You know? And you're in that line. And I've done all kinds of things to avoid lines and time ticketing. And I, 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 did, a, I did a color system. I, I might have been the first one to do it, Larry. I, I might have beat you at something. <laughs> yeah. We have video map. We had video mapping at Creepy not, World. Not video mapping. I had years and years and years ago uh -huh. I had stacks of colored tickets in my ticket booth so it was like green then red then blue etc and each ticket taker had like say 50 of these and so they would run out then the next color would happen the next color so down here we had a light tree in the entertainment area so on the on the light tree it corresponded to those colors green yellow blue so now serving green you know the lights lit and then green and yellow then green yellow and blue so you didn't have to wait in line well, the problem was people lined up at the light tree in order to get in line, you know, so that didn't really work so well. <laughs> but, but, I mean, that was probably 15, 20 years ago I tried that. So is this the hay ride over here? Yeah, the hay ride is... Uh, and they got a dead Santa over here. Yeah, we have, yeah. well, so we still have a few Halloween or Christmas things out, but uh, we'll, we'll scoot around. We'll scoot around this way, but there's 450 linear feet of queue in front of the facade. This facade has been on my list for years to rebuild. Um, just haven't gotten there yet. Looks good to me. You know, the, the easiest way to save time and money is in, in, in July, you know, for this year in July, when you're looking at your list, you cross off the three, and you cross this year, you cross off the four and put a five. So, so your to-do list for 2024, you know, if it's a hayride scene or a room change, just cross that off and just change it to the next year. And that's the best way to save money and time. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe you have an Annie in and that's just crazy. I, I noticed they took all their equipment. All their stuff's out now. And, yep. And we'll, we'll actually, th this is built that we have a bar, I have a bar that runs underneath here. And then, you know, a pipe. I'll, I'm gonna, dr I'll drag that out into the cornfield and then so we can drive through here and then we'll drag it back and how many tractors do you utilize for your hayride i believe it's 13. 13. yeah and if, <laughs> if you drove in through the parking lot you probably saw all the wagons sitting out there and that was a lot too so what is uh like a slow night like do you open on like a monday or a wednesday well we're open um i mean honestly a slow night will be like a thousand people or so i mean it's it's still good I mean, we, 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 we look at our schedule and kind of decide if it's if it's under a thousand, don't open. That's kind of our, you know, throw that day out. And, <laughs> you know, um, 
But, you know, the season every year gets a little bit later. I mean, we're open, I, I think next year we're open uh, as late as like the 12th, 13th of November. So this is the hayride loading area. There, I mean, there, we, don't take, we don't take a whole lot down, but over here would be the Pumpkin King. It stands up and gives the rolls. Um, this is all Q-Line. There's some plasma cut uh, bat rail. Oh my God. Like these guys are insane. That's to keep people from jumping in or out of the VIP line. Okay. So they get a little back uh, cut. <laughs> the, the tractor's on fire. Here's an old light tree that I was talking about. I don't know if you can see the thing, but this, this, is, this was the original light tree that was in the, it was in the entertainment area. And now, now it's the countdown for the tractor. So, the, so you uh, board the tractor like what, right here? Well, you, you board it back there at the Pumpkin King. We have a VIP line and two general mission lines, and they'll they'll filter on, um, and then and then and then off they go. And you plant this corn every year from scratch. Yeah, corn gets planted every year, so you think you're in the middle of a you know a dense cornfield, corn and and you are. Except we have a kids event called uh, Corn Cob Acres, and it used to be the whole the whole 15 acres was corn. Watch your step. You got some puddles. Um, now, yeah, I see some like kitty area yeah. way the heck over there. Yeah. Is that open like year round? That's open in the fall as well. It's the like, agritainment. So the hayride has begun where we're walking. Yeah, we're we're in the hayride now. As a guy blast out of that shed, um, there, there's a bunch of pigs and the hooks out here. Um, you, you come in, the, the the doors close. The, the the southern music kicks up. Kicks you know, the up. one thing uh, is probably. Uh, easy for you is to find all this old stuff because there's so many farms around here. I mean, that's that's one thing we have in, in Lancaster County. We have everything. From just, do people just call you and say, "Will you come get this?" Yeah, it happens. Yeah, you want this tin? You want you want this old stuff? We, I mean, back in the day, we used to dumpster dive. But the pigs come out of the, out of the ceiling. Sweet Home Alabama plays. <laughs> you know, these things are dripping on you. The, so they're all animated. All animated, squealing. The table, the pigs moving. The the, so the, the, let me guess, the, the tractor stops in here. Yeah, it stops, doors close, fog, smell, actors. And how long, because I want to start talking about some questions about your, your haunt and your building and how you uh, change the haunt. So like that particular scene right there, uh, has that been like there forever? You know, it, like how many years has that scene been your like big opening? Yeah, it's a great question, you know, and... Yeah, we have a little bit different philosophy on on the build and the change than I think a lot of people do in the industry. Um, now, that that scene has probably been there. I'm going to say probably 15 years. Okay. Um, the hayride path has changed over the years. In fact, we tore out this bamboo. We tore out corn cob bakers. We tore everything out here and changed our path for a different reason. But in you know. That, that, but when something works, you leave it. When something works, we leave it. If if we took out if we took out the the, the slaughterhouse, we would have an uprising from our customers. <laughs> they, that that is a scene that they want. Now, uh, the, a couple things, uh, and it looks like we're going into some kind of Jurassic Park thing. Well, this is the this is the shade. What uh, does shade stand for? I see all the periods. I don't even know. We, <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. knew when I figured it out originally. <laughs> okay. So I have a question for you. Um, I saw the Amusement 360 video, and yeah. your hayride is like, I, the best way to describe it for me is very dense. Yeah. There's like a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on, mm -hmm. right? And when you build something like this, yeah. this big facility and you, and all this stuff, I won't. I don't imagine you're going to... You built it for it to stay for a long, long time. Yeah, you mean, know, what do your customers expect from you? Do they expect something like this new every year? Is that what you do? Well, or do you just leave it and add yeah. new props? It kind of ties into your other question, you know. Um, so, like the slaughterhouse will get will get refreshed. You know, it'll get it'll get a fresh look, um, and but always stay a slaughterhouse. When we, <coughs> when we build something new, we, we the, the goal the goal is, you know, and not the, the goal is to be to build the best thing that we've ever built. Not necessarily. I mean, I'm not saying it's better than anybody else's. It's just we want to outdo ourselves. But Our do you build goal, one big new thing every year, or do, do you just enhance? So, so generally, what we want to do is have two major changes per attraction. Per attraction. Now, when I say major. 
um, that is, you know, an entire room would be what we consider major. It's not, you know, buying a, a you know, a, a pumpkin king and putting it, that's, that, that doesn't even count. Um, now, with that said, the asylum last year, we took out the entire basement, which was five rooms. Um, the Den of Darkness, we've, we've been changing about two or three rooms per year the last couple of years. Um, but in a hayride, a, a major change is a, is, a, is a scene. It's a whole scene. Um, but, you know... Because this looks like a major build right major here. How long did it take to build this? Well, and that's, that's part of that question is... And you'll see that in, in Fear Factory when we get up there. Uh, you know, our, our builds will generally go on for about three years. So wow. year one, you, you get your building, you get your, you get your special effects. It works properly. It's doing its thing. Uh, well, our soundtrack's kicking in. Yeah, that was, that's, yeah, I know. We, we, that's we, my uh, phone ringer. The, the year two, um, you figure out what else you need. Um, and this is this is uh, four years now for this, and we're actually adding two major things to this this year. So, so this is just what in. happens in here. Well, this is kind of the, the, the wagon rolls through. I should have brought my flashlight. I have a light. Um, the, uh, the the I'm not powerful, but what happens in the here? The wagon rolls through the first room, and it kind of it kind of shows you the that you're in the mechanical area and then the, the tractor will stop in room three and you'll be in room one so or excuse me room two which is the cryo chamber where the monsters are being made and 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 uh, if you look to the right the scientist is on the is up on the stage and the sound system is just unbelievable in it's here. real loud and then the wagon will move into room three and the tractor will stop outside and you'll notice we have things like a dust collection system, or not dust collection. We have exhaust system here while the tractor to get the oh wow, and, um, that's like major league. This this uh, this room we're going to add a wagon lifter this year, and some other uh, big monster that's attacking the wagon and, and shaking it all over the place. <coughs> How many acres is the hayride on? Uh, it's about it's uh, probably twelve. Twelve. Yeah. And how long does it take uh, to uh, drive through it? It's 23 minutes this year. 23 minutes? Mm -hmm. How long does it take to walk through it? Well, probably probably about the same, actually, because we won't be stopping. The The tractor and wagon stop in about seven areas for about a minute. I see a lot of corn still up. Yeah, the harvester, he missed this area. You know, I'm going to tell you, Gene, like the coolest uh, hayride scare that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It was in a hayride um, in Indianapolis called Hannah's Haunted Hayride. Have you ever heard of it? I have not. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty cool effect. And uh, he got a, um, one of those harvester things. A combine and chase A combine. <laughs> and what it, what it is, is like yeah. the thing comes out like right here, right? It'll come out and he'll get right up on the, the damn thing and the thing's turning. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens is like when it goes, like say that direction, it just turns and comes back and picks up the next wagon. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, and, if you look at this little space right here, where it yeah, kind of like makes this yeah, little, yeah. you know, so he'll chase you down and then he'll turn and yeah, catch the next group. Did, did, does it was scary. Company know they're doing it. I don't know, but it was <laughs> definitely scary. We used to do things that I, that if we were doing now, I wouldn't be able to tell the insurance company, but at this point I had to make sure my insurance company knows everything. I'm insurance doing. companies have gotten real tough. Yeah. yeah. The, that path you're looking at there, that's actually our, our kids event. Hayride path, uh, corn cob. <coughs> they they go through there, and and field of screams haunted hayride path is right next to it. But with a couple of rows of corn, you don't know. I mean, even there, like if you look out to the right, that's that's corn cob acres. You know, right there. I mean, that used to be all cornfield. Now, you know, you know, the field of screams path and corn cob acres are side by side. All kinds of stuff happens here. Of course, the truck horn, and there's explosions up there, and the in the barrels. There's a water explosion in the pond. The, uh, there's falls in the trucks, sign falls. You know, there's air, there's air cannons in the in the barrels. You can see them. And up that makes there. it really loud. I beam goes up. This guy comes across. The guy blasts out of here. We have a puker. You know, dock six doors open up. Truck cab falls over. Guy throws a barrel up top. 
But it's the, like everything. It's just, it's mayhem. <laughs> it is mayhem. These barrels are shaking. Flames are shooting out of those. Water's pouring over there. Now, you know, I'll tell you, Gene, like at Creepy World, I don't know if you knew that we had a screen park. Yeah. But uh, people want us to open it for Trans World. And uh, we have a hayride, but ours is more like a show. Okay. And uh, uh -huh. there is none of this like big over the top kind of stuff. And you know why? Because I know how long it would take to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that's why. So yeah. we just have actors that jump on the hay wagons and, you know, yeah. and they have a great old time and they scare well, people. I, I, I probably would encourage anyone that's getting in the haunt industry to do a hay ride because it takes up way too much space. It's way too expensive. Um, it takes way too many actors. The equipment to pull, you know, the tractors and wagons that are necessary are just, you know, expensive. The insurance is, is too much. Um, but it's it's our staple. I mean, it's it's what we started with. You know, we were blessed to have a father that owned this land that we you know was not given to us by any means. We purchased it. So now we have a circus tent, yeah. Psycho Circus. This, this is this this building is getting changed in in three years. This is this is on the chopping block. Three years. Does, it, does an actor slide down there? Actors slide down. They come down the poles. Um, they're they're hidden in all these spots where they can come down the poles and. And then we have stuff stored in here, corn cob acre stuff, and a lot, I mean that the cow doesn't belong here. <laughs> there's, there's a bunch of stuff that's part of uh, corn cob acres. You know, like uh, almost like pretty much almost like every person that I know of that in a haunted attraction that's ever been killed has been on a hayride. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a lot of people realize there's a lot of safety. Like, yeah. you know, when those people got dumped over because they were pulling them down a big hill with a pickup truck, yeah. and Most they don't realize. That's why you have a tractor, because it, it's, it's very heavy. Yeah, a, a so, lot of things are, are, are negligent. You need the right size vehicle to pull the, the, the size trailer. Um, with all that weight. You have angle, you have slope, you have speed, you know, and you know, a Jeep pulling a big wagon, not a good idea. You know, excessive speed, not a good idea. Public road, not a good idea. You know, so I mean, we tons of training, obviously, for, it goes into the hayride, whether it's you know, tractor driver training or actor training is just a lot that goes into it. You can see that we what, are, what are some of like the the things that are the the, the key safety issues for a hayride? Because I, I would think like and, and you know, and I have a hayride, so I kind of know yeah. a little bit. But you know, actors getting run over by the hayrides. Yeah. Well, the the act, actor training is key, but the number one thing for actor training on a hayride is you never ever cross between a tractor and a wagon. We don't we don't even allow them to cross between a tractor and a wagon when when you are when it, when it's parked it's kind of like a wrestler doesn't sleep on his back because you don't want to get pinned right it's the same thing <laughs> so you you, you, yeah. you ingrain that that training uh and so it, it, you take uh, the safety is like your number one um concern you know the thing is is that like when they're on a hayride you would think oh you can't really get hurt because you're in a controlled environment yeah but there is a lot of safety issues with hayrides for sure um, I, I picked that up because you were saying that you don't advise not everyone to get in a hayride. Yeah, it, it's 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 expensive from a lot of standpoint. And you're moving people around in a moving vehicle. The other the other key thing is to have proper you know locking you know safety chains from your wagon to your tractor. And the other main thing is speed. So every every single tractor we know what gear at PM it is traveling at. So it's going it's going the right speed. You know, that that's super critical. And we use a lot of hydrostatic tractors where they're not shifting gears. They're just they're just moving a lever, which is also a lot safer than shifting gears and popping clutches. This is a brand new scene this year. Um, it looks you asked, cool. You asked, uh, you know, how long a scene will be here. Um, Does that a, is that a working moving uh, conveyor it, system? It, it is, and we did have, you build it yourself? <laughs> that's a crazy story. Um, <laughs> I actually looked at buying a conveyor. And I was told that's going to be about $19,000. And then until it got priced out, it ended up being, you know, $40,000. And then it ended up being $60,000. You had your oiler and all these things. Um, yeah, I understand. You can probably find one on Marketplace. You can probably find one. Some business has gone out of business. I, I went to a local place two miles down the road that, that was getting rid of one. I actually went first just to look at it, you know, because they had one that I was going to get. And the guy goes, oh, we got rid of that. It's in the dumpster. I'm like, can I get it? He's like, no, it was dumped already. I'm like, oh my gosh, man, this just missed this. And he goes, but this one here, we're thinking about taking out. We don't use it that much. I said, we'll be on Monday to take it down for you for free. He goes, you can have it. <laughs> and there you go. So this has, these are custom made hooks that have a metal armature in there. 
This has, um, you know... Oh, it looks uh, like somebody get their head cut off. Yeah. This has 30 bodies on it that travel around. This, so, like I said about the, the slaughterhouse, we had a guillotine here before, and I have to have a guillotine. So I needed to come up with a way to still have a guillotine and make a new scene. So we built this new guillotine. It you know, cuts the person's head off. The head rolls down the thing, you know, the trough. It, it blasts you with water. Um, Let me ask you, uh, you, you've been in the hayride business for a long, long time. H had you ever visited Spooky World's hayride? Yeah. The original in no, Berlin? I go, no, I didn't go to the original. I went to the one, uh, the, the one that was bought out. I was not, I was at the sale for the original. You never went to the uh, Dave Berlino's? No. Yeah. He had a, of course, it's like a staple, but yours is so much cooler, like, you know, a beheading. And I'm sure, like, this stuff is just, like, because you're in farm area, you, like, you could just grab this stuff. It's, like, I, I the bought, perfect props. I bought that. How much would that, how much would that be at Transworld? How much would that, that I mean, that crane, 40-foot crane? I don't know. Like, I would think, you know, because it's scrap, it's probably, you know, five, eight thousand dollars $8,000. I got that for five grand. Yeah. Yep. That's the eviscerator over here after the... After the after the bodies go around the track, and, and at night with the music playing and the fire going and the actors yelling and the head getting cut off, and then the bodies get ground up in the eviscerator and spit them out. The the natural props that you're able to acquire being in this rural area is just a gold mine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it takes it takes um, you know, some effort to get them, and and uh, how did you get that here? Well, that was a challenge because it was it was too tall. Get a, I had to get a low boy that was four inches off the ground to haul it here, and I couldn't find anybody to haul it. What did you haul it with? Don't tell me a pickup truck. No, it was a, it was a it was a low boy a tractor trailer with a low boy, you know, a low boy trailer. That, wow. That you know the the, the deck height is it, it's four inches off the ground to get that here. Otherwise, I was going to have to torch half the thing off in order to get it here and reassemble <laughs> it, which we didn't want to do. No, I don't think you want to do that. Looks like you got a spider on a winch. Yeah, thing spins and comes down. And I mean, a lot of things are open right now. Like there's corn off there. This gets closed. The block off corn cob acres to our side. And you got a like a spider. And it looks like almost like a train track is on the floor. Uh, so you asked the question about a, a safety thing. This, this is one of the things we do. Um, so all the tractors on the front axle have a chain with an with orange tape. And they're positioned at the same distance from center line on every single tractor. So if there's any area that's a little bit hard to navigate, all they need to do is look down and make sure that chain, so we have these guides oh, in certain I see. spots, and that keeps you true within an inch to where you need to be. And I, so I'm taking it, I'm just guessing this is like a spider. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bunch of spiders and- Yeah, and, lots of uh, spiders. And, Let me ask you a question. When you go to Trans World, mm -hmm. And you say that you're planning out your scenes way, way, way in advance. Yep. So you're not like, you know, you're probably, you know, know what you want to order. But when you go to Transworld, like, how much would you typically spend there? Because oh, well, I know, like, most people that I know, they're buying way before Transworld now. Yeah. Right? I, I, try, I try to make my orders. If I want it for this season, if I want it for 24, I would have wanted to purchase it in October of 23. Right. If, if I buy it at Transworld, it's only because I saw it and it's cool and I want it and I'll buy it and put it in the barn. And I have so many things. I probably have, <laughs> I don't know, probably 30, 30 pneumatics that... When you go to Transworld, like, this seems like what, what do you think you spend when you go there? You're a big haunt. So, like, what would you, what would be, like, an average, like... And, th and this really is, like, after you've year. already bought stuff. Yeah. Like, how much would you look, nor like... You know, if you were guessing, if, if, if there's not, a, if there's no big purchases, purchases like the year we bought the the big the big vortex, you know, which we're coming up to, averages between sixty and a hundred thousand probably every year, and that's just like uh, on top of everything else. Yeah, yeah. The show. The now show, I have to ask you, how in the hell did you get that fire truck up there well, <laughs> and that bus up there? We had a crane. Uh, we had a crane come to set the trusses on our makeup or our makeup building. And then I had him come back and 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 set the bus up. Oh and, my God! And the fire truck. And we also had the same crane come in and set the tank up there at the fear factory. So, 
Like this is insane. Now, do your actors run run on these decks? Yeah. Well, the cool thing is, not this is Nocturnal Wasteland Pass. So Nocturnal Wasteland is right beside us, and they walk through the school bus. Oh, and so it comes over. Time. So you have customers going across yeah, the so hayride. Every two minutes and twenty seconds, a wagon's coming through here. And then, you know, it, yeah, it's so it's like in a haunted house where you have, like, you're on the right side, but the wall, you can see yeah, through it. You yeah. see people on it, like, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, okay, wow, that is crazy. There's all these fire pots, and, and what's missing right now are there's bodies in these claws, and of course, these are pneumatic. The whole, this whole cage falls over, there's fire, and, and so while you're walking around the town. And your customer, and your act, and just like the people walking through or seeing the hayride yeah, action. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Look at that, and here is a freaking tanker. <laughs> Uh, did you have to pay for this too? I, you know, I, I might have gotten that for free. That the uh, and you got a truck over there turned over. That's that was Jimmy's truck. That, that was his first pickup truck. No lie. And you still have it. Yep, we still have it. Wow. This is going in the new. Uh, we're building the new redneck scene next year. That that's moving up to there. And so some of the stuff is just sitting here because it it kind of makes sense, but it's not in the show yet. <laughs> This looks like uh, some steampunk. Yeah, this, this, yeah. And that's why it's, it's a, a, it's and, a big vortex. And you and, built this yourself? No, we actually purchased that. Um, now, who would have built something this big? That was actually GEP production. They built this for you? Well, they well they just built the rings. You know, we we built the building. We I had to, the deck is engineered. It has uh, like twenty one inch I beams. This it's it's bridge construction, um, and then we brought in about forty trucks of fill because. We elevated up to this height because it was six feet lower. The, the, and uh, but GEP made the made the actual vortex. Oh the my goodness! Well, I would think so. It's the biggest one. I mean, you could drive a truck through it. Yep. And then we added these. So saw. how much would something like this cost? Well, I, I think I think this vortex was. Boy, I'm guessing here it might have been might have been forty grand, but. You know, is it worth it? Does it work on the hayride like it does when you oh, walk yeah, through it's, them? It's real good. It's, and then we bought new fabric this year. Um, it, yeah, it, it's, it's it's very effective. I mean, it's and it's hard to it's hard to come up with what idea you want to have to outdo yourself from the previous year. So let, you know, let me ask you this question: Like, I, I've told people this a hundred times that. Haunted houses, the haunted house industry, very much a, you know, see, replicate industry, right? And when you look at haunted houses, mostly in the Midwest, they're mostly in warehouses, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. When you're over here in the East Coast by Philadelphia, everything, New York, everything is like centered around a hayride. Because obviously somebody did it and then somebody else did it and so on and so forth. Yeah. So like, you know, this area you're in, like say a... 300 mile radius is like the hayride capital yeah. right yeah. Yep. you have so many hayrides in this mm -hmm. vicinity like how is do people like the hayrides better than the haunted houses and then on top of that like how do you i mean is it a hayride war out here <laughs> everybody's trying to top each other not really i think i think what's happened is on the east coast you know you have a lot of you know un unlike in the city you know, out here in the country, you have a lot of farmers that just decided to do these hay rides or these haunted attractions or agritainment. And by default, the farmers have tractors, they have equipment, they have land, they have cornfields. So it, it, it makes logical sense to, to do a hay ride. And is then, everybody like, but is it a hay ride war? Everybody's trying to top each other? I don't know. I mean, I think everybody has their has has their niche you know we'll, we'll go in nocturnal wasteland while we're so let me ask you a question uh gene i'm sure you've seen most of the hay rides you know in the vicinity right mm -hmm. uh, aside from your own which one is your favorite and why okay um favorite hay ride in the area I, I, I don't not necessarily here but yeah. like one that you've seen because i know they're all like in this new york you know, Philadelphia area. I, I have to say that um, Re Reaper's Revenge does does a really nice job. Um, they're a little bit more theatrical, um, but they also what's cool is they have this immense woods that you know you're 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 in the middle of the the mountains in Scranton, and 
you know, it's so dense and they have so much depth where we don't have the depth. So we, we play with what we have, you know. Um, but there, their scenes are very large and way back in and, and, and pretty big. Um, and they do some pretty, you know, creative, unique things. Like a lot of hay rides are very similar. Um, so you really like the, uh, what, that one? Yeah, I think, I, think they do, I think they do a nice job. Um, you know, we built them a 3D haunt. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. The TerraVision one. Oh, yep. Yeah, they, they, they do a nice job. They're, they're a newer haunt. They haven't been around, you know, like 30 years like a lot of us, but they do, uh, they, they do a nice job. So is this the Q line for this haunt? This is Q line, and of course it zigzags. We're in the VIP line. <clears throat> so let me ask you a question. Like, you ch have a, uh, a ticket where you can do different attractions, all of them or whatever. They, they could, they, and they can also upgrade a VIP anywhere they want. So how much would just this cost? Uh, I think it's like $23. We don't do much single attractions anymore. Um, People do it all. On, on certain nights, you know, the, you, you can, the, the single attraction passes are only, only valid on all the slow nights. And the busiest nights with our variable pricing, you need to do, you need to do everything. So how many yeah. square foot, square feet is this attraction? That's a good question. Um, and I, I see that it, it entails a lot of metal work. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, uh, <laughs> So these are our final compounds, and we have there's someone putting people into the into the queue lines here, and then the rules are playing, and then when your light turns green, in you go. So we have a whole system where, um, you know, we can set the dial to 30 seconds, 45, you know, whatever we want, and then we say our group size is six people every minute. Well, they're putting six people in a compound, and every minute your light turns green, and it just goes down through the line and continues all night. And there we go. We're gonna go take a look at not. Eternal Wasteland. And I see you got yourself a nice little milk truck. Dude, this is interesting. I mean, at, from a haunt owner's perspective. I mean, look at the stones. You realize what that's from? No. That, that's, that's, this is, this is how people walk. Uh, you know, one of the things I do notice. There used to be steps here, and that is just all stones drugged by and customers. You're, you're making a lot of cool barriers with giant tires. <laughs> yep. That is really cool. That's one of those, uh, one of those things that are free. <laughs> you just go get them. Yep. Everything is uh, has a little bit of a different vibe. You know, the hayride obviously is, you know, is, is a hayride. This this is a you know post apocalyptic theme. Um, so, are you a fan of uh, Road Warrior? Yeah, it's that's cool. Did you like uh, the <clears throat> Mad Last Mad Max movie? Yeah, Mad, Mad Max is good is good inspiration. This is also a little bit of inspiration from City Museum. <laughs> oh, you like City Museum? Put your head. Yeah. So this, now we're in that bus that's over top of the hayride, over top of Chop Shop, and you know this was the one that we were down there talking about was brought in by the crane. So, uh, you know, as you know, Transworld's doing a uh, show here in Philly area. Is that something like you could even entertain opening for? We, we could. We, we could be open for that. Um, we don't tear, we don't tear, we really don't tear anything down. What comes down is, you know, queue line ropes, banners. Uh, you know, you know, you clean every <laughs> Would you open for that? say we'd entertain it um yeah i mean it's it, it is it is challenging to open like you said a hayride because there's so much like you even look down there like all those trash bags are covering they're covering latex props you know fire you know fire is is put away the, the problem is so, you put it back together just for one night and then you like oh we got to take it back down again because it's pumps are out airlines are blown out yeah. things are winterized you know but you could depending you, you could open up on a certain scale so more than likely you wouldn't open like the hayride but maybe you could open like your haunts the haunted houses would be much easier to open, to open two haunts it would be very easy for us yeah yeah. And maybe have like a big party in your midway. Well, we got a party in the midway and for our effects building. What do you think about, now this is totally off the subject of Phil with Screams. What do you think about uh, the show, the main show, Transworld, yep. uh, being in St. Louis? Do you think like that's a good spot for it because it's centrally located? Or do you think like, maybe it should just like peel up and move somewhere else? 
I, I, my honest opinion is, okay, first of all, let me preface it by saying my catalytic converter got stolen last year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right, we're starting off on the wrong foot. Yeah. Um, and I love what you've done here with all these old telephone poles. So you actually like go out and say, hey, give us all the old telephone poles. Yeah, we, we used to be able to go to a yard where they would bring how, them how, back. How far do you dig them in? Five foot. Five foot? Mm -hmm. yep. Some of the, the ones that are non-structural are three foot. Wow, I think the way that you've laid this out is incredible. Holy cow, I actually thought that guy was real up there. Stick down, man down. So do you, do you like the show being kind of centrally located? Oh, I mean, as far as proximity, I mean, geographically, it, it's it's good for us. Um, you know, it, it's an 11 hour drive. It's fun to stop and see people on the way out. Um, I would not be opposed to a warmer location. <laughs> warmer, okay. Um, well, March isn't too bad in St. Louis, actually. Is, we're, we're, there, we're there for the show. I'm not there for other reasons. So... Um, but I mean, I know logistically it'd be a pain, but it would be really cool. It would be really cool if it would move. Like every three years, if it would move to a different city, it would be neat. Because then we could see other places, visit other places. That'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah. So, Larry, the area we just came through, once we came across the bus, we went across that suspension bridge. This whole section is, is getting torn out. You know, that's going to be our, it, our change for next it's year. It's like you guys are like the ultimate junk collectors. And, not and you know what's funny is there's places that look just like this. Try to, try to grab a wrench. Everything's all in place. But there's places that look just like this, like for real, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you've built it. Right. And, and the other place would be like some guy just can't let go of anything. You've been and, there and it's been there for 40 years. <laughs> right. Well, some people, some people say like, why are you, why are you collecting that? Why are you piling this stuff up? I'm like, believe me, I will use it. I agree with you. I'm a hoarder with a reason. That's a really cool tree. I'm assuming you guys made that. We made that. It what six, did you make uh, it out of? It's a, it's a huge metal armature. Um, and then it's about 6,000 pounds of Buddy Rhodes vertical concrete in this. Wow. And you just kept piling it on? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mesh and it's, it's, it's. Yeah, it's Oh, look, and somebody could live in it. Yep, you can live in there. You can have a pneumatic prop or an actor. I really, really like uh, just like the total chaos of the layout. Mm -hmm. It just makes it, you know, it sells it so much. Are you thinking about, you know, and then, of course, lines? the random car. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you should have seen bringing some of this stuff in. I mean, it, it, it's, it's pretty comical. I think about... You know, we, we carried in the boat. We, we pushed in that car. I mean, this, this bus we're about to go through, I bought that in Baltimore, drove it here, drove it as far into position as I could, hooked two tractors to it, pulled it through, and then took a bottle jack and blocking and, and bottle jacked that thing into position. That's crazy. So everything we're seeing here has literally been done over 30 years. Yeah. Uh, little by little by little by little. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, essentially, I mean, you know. You, you, you know what I find interesting, Gene, is like if you go back to the 90s, every Tom, Dick, and Harry was trying to open a haunted house. Now you don't see anybody trying to open a haunted house. <laughs> yeah. Because they come here and they see your place and they go, well, how, how, how could you do this in one season? <laughs> uh, yeah. No. You'll yeah. be. Yeah. You know, that turtle, you know, the tortoise that lives 150 years, yeah. it'll be dead before you could, yeah. you could redo this. Yeah. So How much money do you think you've spent building all this over 30 years? That's a good question, too. Um, I'll answer that after I say that this used to be nocturnal wasteland as well. It used to go through the brander, tire maze, freezer maze, shantytown, fallen roof and back, and we shortened the trail for two reasons. People don't want to walk so far, and it takes 20 more actors. Um, I, I, we spend, I, I mean, I, I think we spend, it, it's, it's, it's- No, I'm talking about lifetime. Yeah, well, it, it's about, it's about $2 million a year to put the show on. Um, so you, you wouldn't times that by, you wouldn't times that by, you know, 30, you know, 32 years, but I mean, You've got to be in the, you're not, not counting the property or the equipment, you've got to be in the 50 million range. My goodness. I believe it too. And let me guess, you uh, 
These are recycled steps. These were from my house. <laughs> These were from your house. Okay, so they are recycled this was the steps. Old walkway leading to my house. Okay. I dug them out and saved them and <laughs> poured, a, poured a new walkway. <laughs> Gene, you are a savage. You are a savage. Uh, yeah, How many bobcats do you have? Um, do you, as in skid loaders? You know, bobcats, we, skid loaders, anything we, to we move all this a, stuff around. We have an LS 170. Uh, we have a Takahuchi. We have a big pettibone. We we have a man lift. Um, we got, of course, a bunch of tracks. Oh my God! You got to crawl through this. And this this makes you think. It's, what is it? It makes you think. You make it, it makes you think you're getting trapped, you know, because that moves the moves the cage. The door's in the way right. Oh, now. that's crazy. <laughs> well, and look at this. A real bear trap, but it's. It's vinyl. Yeah, rubber, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll pull, there's certain things we move for throughput reasons. Um, on busy days, that'll get shoved out of the way and, you, and you'll bypass it. So our last event we did was the zombie run. So for the zombie run, that's why things like this were opened up. We do a lot of other things here. The zombie And they got to run through here? Uh, blackout, yeah. How many people would come for your zombie run? About 2,500. Holy cow. And how much do you charge for that? Well, I think the cheapest price it starts at around thirty-five or forty, and then. Do you do it every year? And then it's a hundred as you get closer. Yeah, we did, we've been doing that for eleven or twelve years now. My goodness, I remember when that was really popular in the early two thousands. Fizzled. This is the laser swamp. Of course, things are bagged up. You know, the all season, but and it looks fantastic. The, the, the haze, the, the boat looks like a floating kind of thing. Man, this attraction here alone is like a world-class haunt. Well, thanks. I mean, and it doesn't even count the hayride. Yeah. I mean, realistically, if you look at prices of events, I honestly think that the hayride is the you know has the value of your ticket. You you could charge your fifty dollars and just do the hayride, and I think you should feel like you got your money's worth. But obviously, we do all four for that. This place is just totally insane. Now I feel like I'm in Burma. <laughs> and the and the fighting the Japanese. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, this place is absolutely insane, Gene. Well, I mean, it's it's I I I I, I give the credit to you know, the whole team. I mean, we have is that reason. real razor wire you're using yeah, up there? That is actually yeah. Well, and, and the reason is it's a real Tesla coil inside. You're very perceptive. You you realize, you know, you know, you see things like that and you're like, why would that be? Well, the reason is it's a real Tesla coil. So therefore you cannot actually climb in there by accident. You know, whether you're an actor or oh, person, okay. it keeps you out. You I mean, uh, up in here, um, the Tesla coil is firing. Um, obviously it'd be, you know, death if you're inside there. It's a, it's a double wall. Um, and it's- And it's, I'm sure it scares the hell out of people. Yeah, it scares them, yeah. At this point, you're a little bit sent. You know, and, and like, I, I just have to tell you, like, the coolest thing I've seen here, I'm sorry, <laughs> is the fact that you keep using real telephone poles. Yeah, yeah. Where are you getting them? Oh, man, I mean. You just call the company and say, hey, if you cut one down, drop it off here. These I got at a at a scrapyard that, that ha I mean, and the scrapyard has these, and they, they don't know that there's value to it to, like, to a haunter, so it's, it's, the stuff's almost free. It's it's scrap value. It's insane. You're constantly making people yeah. duck down. You're, you're you're vulnerable when you're in a different position like that. This whole building's on a hinge, so the whole thing's you know, the whole bottom is a hinge, so it's rocking, it's rocking back and forth. For you for you vendors out there, what I what I need I need and I need a I need a brand a branding rod branding iron that's made out of like a maybe a crystal clear product or something like that that looks like it's it's fall it, it's hot yeah I'm gonna do a slate of hand and you have like the one in the, that's that's in the fire right but it's welded so you can't pull it out yeah you don't want to sit next to it you go like this and next thing you know I got this branding iron and it's and it's red hot because it has like a, a glowing look to it. And it's smoking, so that I can stab you with it. A lot of chainsaws here. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you something, Gene. Uh, and and I've said this. this building's on chains. Hanging yeah, that looks. Yep. 
We used to have something like this in the darkness. Yeah, this is really cool. Moving floor. Um, but, uh, you know, Gene, something I will tell you. Is this the end of this one? This is it. Um, I tell this to vendors all the time. That's the, that's the, now you can, you can run. <laughs> oh, now you can run? Uh, I tell this to vendors all the time. And, uh, you know, because when you go to the, these shows, you know, it seems like it's a lot of the same stuff every year. You know, these vendors should reach out to their best customers and ask for their ideas. Mm -hmm. Because haunts are like the best testing ground, right? Yeah, sure. So the vendors that make the best stuff get the ideas from their customers. Yeah. And a prime example is like, look at Unit 70, yeah. right? Yeah. And now they say they don't do anything custom anymore. And I get it because it takes a lot of time. But they used to do custom all the time. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, I got to have that, right? And so Unit 70 is smart because they listen to their customers. Ghost Ride travels all over the country yeah. talking to haunt owners, yeah. right? You know, Michael and I have a, a great relationship at Ghost Ride. And, you know, it, uh, the, the challenge is when you're doing something custom, it's going to, it might cost a little bit more money. Uh, but, but, you know, Michael Shaley is a, is a really good listener at, at what you want. And he really wants to make it, make it right. So all the bodies in that... In, in, the, uh, in the in the fear factory they're all they're all ghost ride or chainsaw bodies are ghost ride um, I would like all the bodies on the property to be made from ghost ride it's, it's the only company really that's making a body durable enough that you can hang on and abuse you know I have a I have a funny ghost ride story as we're about to uh, check out your other two haunts uh, I tried to get him to make for my darkness haunt tour I tried to get him to make a pig, a slaughtered pig with an armature inside with a chain. And I said to Michael, Michael, uh, if you made this, I'm going to make a scene out of it. And I guarantee you'll sell thousands of them. And he said, uh, he goes, yeah, well, yeah, let me get back to you. And he sends me a bill. And it was like a $4,500 sculpt bill, a bill, oh. you know, for the sculpt. <laughs> I said, Mike, I, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm telling you this is going to be the greatest seller you've ever had. Because nobody had ever made any kind of beef or meat that you could, like, you know, hang. Yeah. You know, you had the distortion side of beef and you would tie a rope around it and it was too heavy, it would rip. Yeah. And he says, well, I, I'm not, I, he goes, well, then uh, I'll give you a commission for everyone I sell. No, I said, forget it. I'm not, you know. <laughs> so anyway, he calls me back Halloween. He says, hey, I made that pig. I'm going to ship it to you. I said, uh, it's already October. I don't need it now. But he shipped it to me anyway. Anyway, it was his best seller of all time. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. including the fact that he sold them to, you know, movies like Dark Knight. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. the hanging meat. Yeah. But I was like, but that was a prime example of how he you know listen to his customers yeah. and you know and it, and it turned out like you know it was a whole line for him all this meat that would hang from chains and whatever and it all started with a pig yeah well i mean i hear you and and you know i remember you know a long time ago tony timpone yes from fangoria from fangoria and, and the one comment he made really really stuck in my mind and he said man he goes Everything is, is homespun, and this is years ago, um, and it's still homespun. I mean, we, we, I want to build everything. Like the fence at the asylum, this asylum that's not purchased. It's, it's, let's find this metal, let's design it, let's get the finials, let's get all the pieces, and we'll put this in our shop and build it. I mean, it's, if, if we build it, it it's unique. You know? So what goes on that screen right there? Is it like, you know, video? <laughs> On the screen. So there we have, um, yeah, we 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 play mo we play movies or 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 um, uh, we used a different company this year with uh, that, that would be like an Arugas and plays the the, the clips the, the clips the different TV channels on on the screens. So we you used to do trivia and we had a we had an MC and all that kind of stuff and that's great too. But it's it's just entertainment. It's back to entertain these people in this line with the with the projection shows on on the building um, and you asked me what was mapped every every single thing is mapped there's a there was a model made you know digitally of of the den facade and the asylum facade so then the company can come in and and for christmas we had lights all around the windows and garland and and cramp is going how, how big are these haunts right here 
Um, well, this one is a this one is three uh, this one is is three stories and that one is four stories. Like, but how many square feet? Well, it's each each floor is about forty by sixty. So, um, and it, it's not all the all the floors it used. Let's say it's about. Uh, probably really realistic, like six thousand square feet. So these are your last two attractions, and they're indoors. Yep. So let's check them out. Yeah. So we have a general. I see you still got some uh, Christmas lights hanging. Yeah. And, now and let me ask you a question, Gene. When you opened for your Krampus, did you open your hayride as well, or was it just the haunts? You know, we only did the two the two houses. And okay. And it's it's just two. It's too time consuming. Which to, kind of. Uh, there's, no, there's no corn in the hayride. Which, by the way, kind of, uh, you know, goes along with what I said that it would be really hard for you to open we'll go to the VIP. for uh, for trans for like a uh, like a trans world type event for one day. Yeah, you're, you're right. You can't even do it for Krampus, like really close, backed up to Halloween. Well, the corn's harvested. Now we could leave the corn up, and we did one year. We left the corn up and did uh, and had the hayride open, but. But I think that you could do uh, an event for for that that would uh, be just as good, if not better, with just your haunts and your wasteland. Yeah. yeah Without the hayride. Yeah, we, we could. I mean, and, and then and then I get it, and then I get into the weeds, and I say we should open up Nocturnal Wasteland and, and light the heck out of it, um, <laughs> and then and then open up for like ten days and do a, have a. a a walkthrough light show, and then, and then everybody wants to quit. Just to <laughs> so the reason a bunch of the lights are up yet is we're going to do a we're doing a, a free uh, a charity a charity Christmas tree giveaway on December twenty second. So we left some of the lights up for that. We're bringing all of our trees from our, our produce stands over, and we're going to do a, a free giveaway of Christmas trees on the twenty second. So the the sound is off, but with that said, there's a couple things. That oh, I love that sign. Yeah. Pay to get in. Pray to get out. I love it. And look at this. What is the meaning behind this? You got one, two, three. So that's back to our line attendant. So if I'm the line attendant, I'm like, how many is your group? Okay, six, come on up. You're in line one. Kind of like you do at a Disney. Just the same thing. And we're we're putting people in the queue line, and there's the light system in action. You know, every 30 seconds or minute, whatever that's set for, the light will turn green for the next line. So right now, uh, line two is entering the building. And then it'll be line three, then line four, then line one. It'll just constantly go like that. So there's one line attendant putting them in and one up there letting them into the building. Wow. It's amazing. It's just, it's just efficient throughput that way. It's crazy. Make sure they have the door open for us. They do. So I have the, the entrance and exit doors open for us. And um, I think we have show lights on and work lights, so it'll be, um, we should have, we should have a little bit, a little bit better lighting here. To, to so there's, there's, most of the sounds are off and all the, uh, and all the air is off. This is an actor hiding his body, they're, they're, they're coming, coming out of there. This, this floor is moving. And, Oh, and there's there's Kip's wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just killed somebody. Yeah. She's a murderer. We have proof right here. Hey, we got you. And uh, yeah, these are great. Yeah. Oh, this looks uh, this looks like a, a real old house. Yeah. All this is uh, carved foam and coated, and more ghost ride bodies. But you love ghost ride. Yeah. There's a ghost ride prop here and slam scare and Yeah, that works. There's a great I'm, actor Kobe here. They can there, there's a secret door to get through to the other side of the haunt and a spotted actor can attack from four different positions. Well, Beehive, that's uh ghost ride now? Or no, this is uh from that other company. Nevermore. Nevermore. Yep. And keep in mind that this is not the real lighting. This is this is still residual from Christmas, and and some of it will be left up for. That's really cool how you did that. Like you know where you did the uh, the planks and you did all the spiders like bubbling through. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. And once again, you live in rural areas. You're going to get a lot of really cool, authentic rural stuff. I think this was a, this was a delinquent renter. We cleaned out their storage unit. <laughs> Is this a scare thing here? It is. That's a that's a that's a, that's a, that's a, 
It's a slam down. It's a slam down. Yeah, it's a... Nice. <laughs> and it looks like it's a... You will never... A tool, a toolbox. toolbox. Yep. Yep, you got... I mean, each each room we try to design with three actor spots because people want to be with with other people in their room. So we try to try to design each room with, with three actor hiding spots. Whether there's one or three, it's just good to have it that way. You know, a good a good retreat. You know, every every actor needs a safe spot to get out of the way. Um, so that's always in, in the mix. This, this is a ghost ride uh, room here that we. Uh, those are unit seventies, aren't they? No, it's actually ghost ride. The soda. Oh, yeah. that, those are ghost ride. You know, this isn't something they did. I asked them to do it. They did it, and now they sell them. Um, and then we modified them a little bit. But, you know, all the actors we try to. Do oh, I like that. You go through uh, yeah. a door jam of arms, and they're on, they're on uh, springs, spring hinges. Very nice. I'm assuming this uh, moves up here. Yeah, the pot and pan rack shakes, and the water's going, and you know, I mean, it, it's you know, things like this. I mean, it's the plasma cut image or plasma cut. You know, everything feels very. Claustrophobic. Yeah. But you can't, and everything's like, oh, please grab me. Well, I mean, it looks like you want to grab it, and you can because yeah. it's, and so it's for, quarter inch plate steel. You see that? There's bolts down there. That's bolted to the, yeah. That's one of the sounds that's hard to turn off. Yeah, that's really cool. Like up in the, uh, Oh, there goes the pots and pans. Yeah, I'm not sure. There, is, there must be a compressor on. I'm not sure why, but there's a great there's a great spot for the actors to come, come flying out of. It's a you know, you're, you're you're designing spots that you get great slam scares, but they're still safe approaches. You know, they can they can. See I noticed you had this on it too. Yeah, like that's, that's closing it. But but here it's it's all it's enclosed so that. A customer isn't in there. Customer. And I also notice you have like a metal plate yeah. on the floor yeah. bolted yeah. so that this thing can hit it yeah. right and, down there. And here as well. Yep. Yeah, and there. Yeah. And then it has this to push it back. Very nice. And it's very, and I can definitely tell you have scent machines in yeah. here. Everywhere. Because it smells like yeah. crap. <laughs> so, Gene, when somebody asks me, when I'm not around you, see, then I can actually say what I really think. Right. I'm going to say, that place is crap. <laughs> I meant it smells like crap. Because it actually does. Yeah. <laughs> this room is, uh, this room's changing for 24. This, this is, uh, it's just old, tired, dirty. It just needs upgraded. And so is this room here. And it looks like you have something to move books here. Or you did. It's a pneumatic bookshelf. This is it. Is that an animation or an animation? <laughs> okay. This room's also changing the 24. Now you gotta go up? Yeah, you go up. There's a swinger up here. The what, an actor somewhere? <laughs> oh, right there? Back and forth. So he stands here and he swings out. Reminds me of uh, Mystery Mansion in Gatlinburg. Have you ever been there? I have not. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of that. Poor girl. Poor girl. There's two ways here. You can crawl through the fireplace or you can go this way. Oh, this is really cool. You crawled, you came out there. What's that? It came in manner style. There you go. Uh, Raven's Grin. You know, uh, we can debate on uh, 
a canny manor? Yeah. Because, you know, I tell people it's not a haunted house. Yeah. Yeah. So does an actor lay on that? Yeah, and they're laying, they're laying here. You know, it looks like a board table, and then they just stand, stand down and come at you. Oh, that's pretty cool. Did you make that yourself? Yeah, we made it. Wow, that's really neat. And it is really, really... The smell machines are uh, in force. And, uh, and it's very claustrophobic in here, which makes you feel, you know, more scared. For sure. This room is actually under construction. Uh, the guys were working here today when we were up in a silo. We saw their cars down there. Um, this is, uh, it, it was a doll room. And I just realized there's some, watch, watch the walls because I just got wet paint. Um, um, yeah, I think I, I did too. I don't see I'll that. send you the dry cleaning bill. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all over my hand. But, uh, so yeah, th this room is, is uh, it's a doll room. <laughs> I like the sound. How many animatronics do you think you have uh, total throughout Feel the Screams? Oh uh, boy, it's, it's hundreds. It's, it's definitely hundreds. Of, uh, How many guys. have you built yourself? Uh, well, Probably also hundreds. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's... It said, enter the darkness. I, I, the darkness, hey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a royalty check. <laughs> but are we in a different haunt or are we still the same one? We're still in the same one. We don't, we don't do the game where, you know, there's, there's 75 haunts and... Each layer is another another. Yeah, I know. Like uh, I'm not gonna name names, but like they would have a uh, the spinning tunnel is one attraction. Right, right. Or the... We have 13 attractions, and one of them is a spinning tunnel. Yeah. Parking lot could be one. Yeah, the parking lot. You get you get your uh, Cadillac converter stolen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scary one there. So it, we, there's another level to this? Yeah. Oh my gosh. The sound isn't on in here, so the speaker is just making a, a big loud noise, but this is the chainsaw room in the exit. Den of Darkness. That's the Den of Darkness. It's great. That was a, I'm going to lock the front door leg. Okay. A couple of quick impressions. Each one of their haunts are like, could be its own haunt. And what I mean by that is they're long, they're very detailed. That haunt right there was four floors. Like, you could get by and say that is a haunt that you could charge $20, $25 for, and I think people would love it. And so the last haunt they have here is this one right here. And uh, is this one bigger or shorter than that one? Uh, it's about the same. About the same. Holy smokes. So Phil Scream started in 93. You're going to want to go this way. You're a VIP kind of guy, right? Yeah, I'm a VIP kind of guy. What are you doing to me, Gene? Yeah. <laughs> how can the world could you let me go through the public? I mean, like, look how long that line is. Right, You're going to make me wait? My <laughs> battery would die. Never make you wait. We, we, Phil Scream started in uh, 93. We added the Den of Darkness in 95. We added the Frightmare Asylum in, in 2000 and two and then nocturnal wasteland in i think it was 12 or 13. 
So once again, you have your Q line system here, your lights, your lights. Your yep, shirt. here you got the different lines and they know which group is going in. Yep. Uh, the entire uh, basement this year was, uh, was, was redone, so. Of course, there's an act on the other side. And it's lobotomy. Yes. What would an asylum be without a lobotomy? Are they sneezing? Sneezing, coughing, and of course there's the effects when they're when they're functioning, they're actually spinning on you. I mean, this room, this is this room is off the hook. When you, the actors in here, just I mean, you you think you actually just checked into an asylum? It, it is crazy. This room is just insane, and you see it from one side and the other. It's it's, it's just yeah, I love that. I also like it, like, and I do this myself. <laughs> you have these old songs, these scratchy yeah. 78s, yeah. if people even know what a 78 is. Yeah, we think uh, a lot of it. And, uh, and you're playing this old 1930s. Yeah, you wouldn't want to get coughed on by her. Here's where Nurse Ratchet would work. Yeah. The doors move and, you know. Holy cow, what just happened? That would be a C, that's a that's a delousing chamber. It has CO2 blast. <laughs> okay. This this is this is under construction for 24 already. It's uh, been gutted. It's gonna be a bathroom shower scene. You know, we have to point it out, but there's about there's about uh, 11 to 13 emergency exits in, in both buildings. They're at every level on every end. Oh my god, the scent smell yeah, is back. Yeah. <laughs> I can step over the sensor. Get it now. Right there. That's great. All those cloud clips that were going around, we took them all, we compiled them, and, and played. And a clown is watching it. Uh, and you have a, a clown over here getting ready. It's, it's like the, it's, it's supposed to be like the makeup trailer, behind the scenes trailer where the clowns are getting ready for the show. Like this Toronto Clowns page. Or one comment That's uh, pretty clever there, Gene. Sorry, I got the squeeze inflated. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, it's funny, you can tell how cold it is from the, the way the squeeze feels. <laughs> yeah. And then they make an escape there. Another one of Kip's illusions there. Kip, you're back in business. <laughs> he worked for uh, 13th floor. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Has anybody ever come to Eugene and say, hey, can we buy this business off you? No, they haven't. Um, we, we get a lot of requests. Probably, I mean, it's not weekly, but it's monthly for people wanting us to you know, consult or come and build or, or, or finance something. And, and it's just... We still have a desire to, to franchise or, or or take care of another place. Is, where in the heck did you get this? Did you make this? No, it's actually Tree Divisions. Um, I was going to say that, but yeah. i never seen that they had these checker ones. Well, we, we did it that way. You know, we just, we just decided to do that. And we actually put our rubber squares on the top. If we had a problem with the squares failing, uh, they just... They, they just break down and, and just rip. So we've eliminated the carpet on top, and we now have them mounted on the top. Strictly for a repair, from a repair standpoint, we can repair it as opposed to tearing the whole floor up. So Mark's been good at we, you know, sending us replacement checkers and working through the problem. The problem. Now what the heck is on the floor here? P pea gravel. 
And what's the purpose for it? Well, when it's when it's dark and it's strobing and they're spread out every night, when you see the roaches and, and it looks like they're moving on the wall, you feel like they're crunching on the, the ah, roach bodies. I get it. And there goes my phone. Another time. So, if anybody's watching this video, they know that Larry's ringtone is Halloween. Yeah. <coughs> when this is loaded with actors up here, it's so creepy. It's a great. It's a great thing. That was, uh, no You guys are just pillaging, like, for, like, authentic props. You probably, if you had to tear this down, <laughs> would pay tens of thousands to have it uh, hauled to the dumpster. The, the, you know, do you, ever, do you ever think about, like, if, if you know, when you un uncover, like, Mayan ruins or something, what some people would think... <laughs> If this, if this had like 30 feet of dirt on it and they were excavating one day and be like, what the heck was going on? In yeah, I know. I, that would be crazy. <laughs> what is the, uh, the, the, the future for, for uh, Field of Screams? Is this something like, like, can you see yourself retiring from it? And yeah. uh, would you sell the farm? Would your kids take it over? Really Do your kids bad. want to take it over? I mean, so, you know, I, I told to a lot of people in the industry, and it's, it's really interesting you bring that up. Some of us think we pre-planned pre this and we actually didn't. Um, we're we're in, a, in the middle of succession planning now. So we're, we're trying to figure out what the best, not for us to exit, but what is the legacy. You know, it's not a business, it's a legacy. We want, we want to pass this on and have the next generation run it. Um, I'm super fortunate that my oldest son, Kyle, who's 28, is interested in the business and working full time in the business. He's competent and he's now basically running, you know, running the build crew. Um, my youngest son, Tanner, uh, 24, is also in the business, super competent and interested. And he's on the actor services side. He's more on the office side. So, you know, my brother and I are, are very fortunate to have people in our family that not only are competent, but they're willing and able and excited to run this business. So this business is going to outlive you and your brother. That's the goal. I mean, you know, I would love to see. This would you like person. to be buried here? Hey, that's a good idea. Maybe okay. bronze statues at the fountain. We could be the, the bronze statue. Yeah, kind of like, right? you know, Disney. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, the goal is that. You know, have you ever thought about it? Like going to your, see if you could have, uh, you know, your, your crypt put right in here. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, but um, I should probably put that in the. Uh, I should probably put that in the succession plan. <laughs> I, I, I had to do that. You know, I, I'm still wondering why Michael Jackson isn't buried at Neverland Ranch, and it's not like an Elvis Presley Graceland already. Yeah. It would be like the most visited place in California. Yeah. I mean, but, I think that you know, if, you, if you talk to a bunch of people, they don't they don't have someone that wants to take the business over. And you know what a shame. Well, what do you what do you do? What do you do in that case? You know, I guess I guess you sell. You, you, you go you know, move to St. Lucia or whatever. But um, you know, for us, I'm, I'm doing this as a passion. We we did this because we wanted to. I, I would see myself kind you, of being you, here forever. In your mind, you can't see. You know, you're gonna die doing it. You know. I, I would say so. I mean, would you be wheelchairing yourself through, <laughs> kind of like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, when he says, <laughs> "Grandpa was a one hitter." Remember that? And he yeah. couldn't hit her, Grandpa. Yeah. And he yeah. couldn't. He couldn't get a hit in. <laughs> Grandpa was a one hitter. You know, <laughs> it, it's. I love that movie. Yeah, it's it's creepy. I, my favorite Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie is Part Two. Because I like Chop Top. You know, we had Gunnar Hansen here. And I, we had Gunnar Hansen. And he was he was, he was was afraid to go into Den of Darks. He goes, you know, I, I know I was in these movies, but honestly, Gene, he goes, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to go in, you know, in these haunted houses. <laughs> so he wouldn't go in. That's crazy. He wouldn't hayride, but he wouldn't go into buildings. So, Gene, I think we've seen about the whole place. I do want to show you one last, you know, spot, and it's our, it's our makeup building. It's where all the actors sign in and where our costumes are. So we'll scoot down there and we'll wrap up down there. All right, let's go see it. So now we are here in the... FX building. FX building. 
and he wanted to bring me in here and show me this. <laughs> Yeah, and so that is that, that's your gift. You're gonna ride so, that back to Delaware. No, you the whole no, you get your actors behind it and you fling the mud on their costumes. <laughs> is is yeah. that what you do? Yeah, well, we put a pool of blood there, and that's how we get the blood on their costumes. But you were close. Okay, <laughs> so we're here. You got a big erase marker board up there. Ah, uh, that's call times and things like that. This whole building, you know, what happens here? All the actors, you know, this is where it all starts for the evening. They all come through the the entrance door. They sign in here with the managers. They get their costuming. They get their weapons. They get masks. Let's go check it out. Now, let me ask you a question. What percentage of masks to makeup do you use? Well, that is another great question, Larry. Um, and I probably differ in opinion on this than a lot of people, too. But I would just assume everyone would come over here and grab a silicone mask and put it on, get eye black and get their costume and go out the door. Um, but a lot of people don't want to wear a silicone mask. It's too hot, it's cumbersome, you can't kiss your girlfriend, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're probably 50-50. 50-50, but where do you put makeup on? Do they, do you upstairs. have makeup artists? Yep, upstairs. Okay. So, um, I mean, and the thing is, I mean, makeup's great, but a silicone mask. I mean, how many hours of makeup is one of those silicone masks? I mean, you know, I'll tell you what. It's, it's hours. I mean, if you were gonna if you were gonna make that a prosthetic and put that on someone, that would take that would take a long time. I will tell you my favorite masks. Okay, and and I hope uh, the silicone mask companies don't kill me. You gonna say Zagoni? No, <laughs> no. My favorite ones are the you know the ones that Robert Kurtzman was making. Yeah. Those foam latex. Mm -hmm. They look really good and they fit like a glove. And yeah. none of the actors complain about wearing them. Yeah, they're light. Um, they're very light and they kind of absorb like sweat and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they look great. And they have the necks on them. And they're easy to put on and off. And uh, we order probably fifty new ones of those every year. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but the silicone masks. I mean, they can't be. You know, they can't, you can't topple them in terms of detail. Yeah, we, I mean, we do, we have a lot. I mean, we, ha we have half masks. We have some of the ones you're talking about, Kurtzman. We have silicone. We do makeup. And I see your costumes are, they have these, uh, like, banners hanging up. And it says, Hayride, Nocturnal Wasteland, Den of Darkness, mm -hmm. and Asylum. So everything's broken out by type. It's broken out by attraction. And then, of course, you, you don't know. I mean, with, with the cast, it, it could be... It could be that your butcher tonight is, you know, a 200-pound, 300-pound male. Or it could be that your butcher tonight is a 150-pound female. You, you, so we have, you know, the, the cast changes. So we and you have got cast pictures on the wall. You know, you, know, you have to watch, uh, Gene, the video that we did of uh, Alan Hoff's place. Mm -hmm. That was like the, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway for me was how great his... Uh, his setup was for the for the actors. Mm -hmm. um, it was really really good. So how many makeup artists do you have? Twenty sixteen. So they come up, they get up here, and then they they get in line here for their for the five year artists. jacket winners. What is all this? So those are people that have had perfect attendance for five years, and perfect attendance for ten years, and perfect attendance for fifteen years. So. That's all 28 days or however, however many days. So every time somebody does it, you have to reprint the, the banner? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll add, it, add it to it, send it out or, or reprint it. But uh, this year we have, I think, five people up for the five-year jacket, a few more for the 10-year. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it, we, we, we had this achievement, this milestone, so we just wanted to you know, put it up here and put it on display. And you have your actors sign, like, year? Yeah, a lot of them sign. You know, it's just something fun to do. And loving memory of Jeremy Spickler, was that an actor you lost? That was a full-time employee that was here for many, many years. Had you know a lot of the inspiration here at Field of Screams came from Jeremy. He was uh, he was a kid that started here, you know, right out of high school, and and was here for years and years. And and he he grew up, you know, in this business and was you know just learned a lot of skills here. So it was, I see uh, you've got some stuff from the very first year. Uh, yep. 93 that's that's and guess what you've got the uh guillotine yep <laughs> and there's another guillotine yeah and an electric chair of course uh-huh and then these are i guess years where you were building the haunted that's when, houses that's when the den the den was added in 90 95 so that was uh that's the same barn that we were looking at with the 
with the facade being built and then the, is this like an original flyer that is uh, i'm not sure it has to be it's got a phone number not, on it but uh is the phone number good anymore it, actually it is that is the same <laughs> that is the same phone number yeah wow and at that point we advertised probably in a five minute radius so look at that the price was seven dollars yeah that had to be a long time ago children under ten four dollars group rate five dollars it's changed ain't that something we, we have to add multiple digits to it yeah and that's that's my brother and i up there with with my mom uh she she's 80 84 does she still work here? She did up until last year. She was she she pushed the the wheelchair prop, you know, that you step on this thing, you step on the the pedal and the spring loaded. She was an actor. She was an actor here. Yep. Does she still come down for the? She she still comes down, checks things out. My dad comes down, goes to the food trucks. Um, but my mom was an actor. I mean, you know, every every night up until just about a year ago. Wow. Yeah, pretty impressive. Still goes to the gym three days a week. Does she really? I'll tell you about, I can still do a plank for a minute. <laughs> wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah. What the heck is this? Because it's kind of disgusting. A cat? So they were actually found in the wood barn over the years. You can see that, uh, I mean, you can see the shape. Like it actually died on a, on, on a, on a, on a board and was petrified. And yeah, you had to screw a dead cat to the wall. <laughs> well, Gene, thank you so much for the tour. Uh, I think this is going to be a very long, long, long video. Well, we'll, we'll get to see your editing skills, and, and I think, uh, I mean, it's, 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 fun to, it's fun to share what we've done over the years, and uh, you know, we've been friends for a long time, and it's great that you can make it here, and, and I, I promise you the next time you come, I'll have actors, so now I know you're actually show up. Yeah, I want to come with actors now. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah. I have to tell you, your place is uh, outrageous. Appreciate it. And I would say that you are, I would, I'm, I'm coining a new phrase for somebody that just does something that like nobody else would do. And that would be, you know, you're a savage. I like that. You're a savage. <laughs> savage. Because you're out there cutting all this metal and moving these buses yeah. and, and moving things that weigh you know, more, almost as much as the Titanic and you're dragging it around. I mean, you are a flat out savage. You try to find a way to get it done. And you're, you're not taking the easy route. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, hey, thanks a lot for uh, the tour, Gene. Yeah. And uh, you can make it out to, to feel the screams here in Mountville, Pennsylvania. And, and uh, like we mentioned earlier, if you're you know, a vlogger or a YouTuber, or you want you, you want to come out and you know, get some good footage for your for your channel and and uh we'd love to have you so just reach out to us at fieldofscreams.com well thank you and uh i'll be back when you have actors we'll look forward to it thanks all right for scary videos and more subscribe to our youtube page huntworld.com